Mic check, mic check. Hello, hello. Are you alive? Are you there? Are you listening? Starting? Where the fuck did I put my phone? Oh, he, oh shit, yeah, me too. Uh, it's on the, uh, right underneath the, mar uh, the, the board. On yeah. the left, is it? Left side. We're live, by the way. I'm sorry, what? I said we're live, by the way. All right. I think we're live anyways. Ah. I'm gonna find out in a second. Yeah, we're live. Hey, how about that? Hey, imagine that. Yeah, turn your volume off. Don't want the echo coming through. I've done this before, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey. Hey, hey. I think we're live. Yeah, all right. Happy Sunday. Uh, you know what? What? Get me my cigars over there on there. Yeah. We are live. Coming at you from Transgression Studios, Derry, New Hampshire, Moose and Squirrel. Joining you in just one second. Here we go. Absolutely. All right. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the last full week of summer. What a bummer. Oh, bullshit. Bring Holy. On, bring on the fucking cold weather. Bring on all that fun stuff. Yes. Full, last full week of summer. I hope you're doing something fun besides sitting here watching Moose and Squirrel. You got to remember, MCA from the Beastie Boys fought and died for your right to party. Absolutely. So don't squander it. Be nice to each other. Brush your teeth and hug your moms. Take care. Brush your hair. Yeah. All right. So what's going on? How was your week? Everything good? Pretty fucking uneventful, man. Really? Pretty uneventful. I got, I got my, uh, anyone that was uh, on my personal page would have seen that I finally got my jackson guitar back the one that's been gone for 18 months 18 months it was only supposed to be 12 weeks 18 months mm -hmm. jesus h 18 months it's imagine amazing what a call to the better business bureau in the attorney general's office will do the, that's the lifetime of a goldfish to get somebody here yeah? wow imagine yeah imagine that so my i finally got it back um I, Anybody check out my personal page if you're interested. I had my Jackson King V finally returned to me after 18 long months. Guy did a great paint job. Unfortunately, he took a year and a half to get it back to me. Unacceptable. But I got, but, but I got it back. Good. Good for you. So what are we going to talk about today? We are uh, going to talk about musicians, bands, uh, individual musicians if you want. We're doing overrated and underrated. So it's over under. So basically, we're going to throw out anything music-related. Mm -hmm. You know, can be uh, musicals. American, American flag guitar paint. There you go. Uh, um, uh, rated right in the middle. I, no, I, I, will, I will give that American flag guitar paint. I will give that an underrated, phenomenal job. Uh, the customer service, I will give us, is significantly overrated. Yes. So the, the overall experience will Two fall right in the Two thumbs down middle. and a go shit in your hat. But I got it back. And that's not what we're here to talk about. So anything, anything musical. You want to talk about <coughs> musicals? You want to talk about <coughs> Rent? You want to talk about cats? 
Probably not, but hey, it's 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 on the board. Clang, clang, clang right. goes the trolley. Yeah. Uh, Blue Man Group, that's musical, right? Yes. Yeah, so any, any anything, you know, obviously we're going to probably stick mostly to, to rock and metal. And yeah. We'll, you know, we'll throw a little bit of pop music in there a little bit. And any era? You want to do 60s? Any, you can anything, go 70s? Yeah, anything at all. You know, we might not, you know, if you throw something out there that we don't know, we'll just tell you that we don't know. And if we don't know, then we're pretty much going to say it's rated right where it should be. Yeah. So it can be overrated. It can be underrated. And it can be right in the middle. It can be as rated. Got to like a right in the middle. As advertised. As advertised. Good. So right. let's uh, drive we, the bus. We, okay. So we had, we had a couple that we talked about that we're, we're not going to start with right away. All right. Because there are some that we're going to get pretty in-depth here. You know, we should get a referee out here because we might need one. We, we, might, we might need Big John McCarthy to get in between the two of us on some of these. <laughs> but, you know, let, let's start with one that we, I think we're going to agree with, and, and that's Metallica. Yo, yeah. I, I, and I would make the argument that Metallica is underrated. And for a long time they were. And very much so. And, and, I, and I also will make the argument that Metallica is overrated. So I think I'm going to say that they're right in the middle because I think that their early stuff was very underrated. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Injustice for All, Master of Puppets, Ride the Lightning, Kill Them All, very underrated. Yeah. Uh, Black Album, I think, is very overrated. And in, we've talked about Metallica before. My biggest problem with Metallica, Black Album, was if it was any other band, I would have loved it. But for Metallica, even, I, I thought it was kind of garbage. Even if it was Def Leppard? If it was Def Leppard, I would have liked it better than I like regular Def Leppard. I agree with you, and I uh, delving a little bit more in Metallica. James Hetfield, underrated. Very. He's going to go down in history. Now, all of this, it's all opinion. None of this is fact. None of this is law. He's going to go down in history, in my opinion, as the greatest rhythm guitar player to ever walk the earth uh, the for great, his consistency. The greatest rhythm guitar player not named James Holkren. Yes. yes. Or Malcolm Young. All right. Uh, we, got, we got our first one. Um, Bob Krauss, Metallica, underrated through the 80s, overrated since. I would agree with that perfect, 100%. Perfect, succinct uh, it, uh, 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 statement. Yes. And I, and, I, and I think that that kind of puts them as... Rated. I would say that they're where they should be. Right in the middle. Overall, I would say that, you know, if you take away the fact that, you know, pre-Black Album, they were a very underrated band, mm-hmm. and post-Black Album, I think that they're kind of an overrated band. I think, actually, their last couple of albums, I, I didn't really enjoy Death Magnetic as much as some, but I think the, the uh, Hardwired, I think, is, is, is good. Mm-hmm. I think that they're starting to come back around to what made them popular for me, for guys my age, my yep. generation, your generation, uh, our excuse- generation talking about yep and, and so I, I would yeah i'd say that they're they're you know rated right where they should be i think certain albums are under or overrated but i think as a, as a band as a whole i'd say that they're rated and bob kraus says except and he's not saying except like except for something he's saying udo dirk schneider he's got his balls to the wall he's got his balls to the wall absolutely Great riff. so except uh, I, I don't know that they're over or underrated. I think that they were a, a decent band. They had some good songs. Uh, I don't think that they're either over or under. I've never heard anybody say Except was their favorite band or Except's the, the best band in the world. Yeah. But you, people like them, and I think that for that band, I think that, that that would aptly be where they would be categorized. I think they're a decent band. They, they don't suck, but they, they're not, wow. They were just there. Yeah, So they and, and I think that that's the, the reputation that they have is just – being there they're just a band, just no, a band. You know, I, i've never heard anybody say oh excuse you anything great or yeah. bad about uh, them. right and yeah. that's just it so except everyone's like hey do you hear the new except album yeah it's pretty good yeah it's not bad oh we got a couple really cool songs on it i will say this the song fast as a shark when i first heard that as a kid i so bad wanted to do a cover of that song really I said that is a very underrated song and i want to do a cover on it until it gets to the chorus Fast as a shark, you go out in the dark. He's a killer. He'll rip out your heart. He ruin the song. He wrote me. that about Fonzie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let me throw out uh, Stray Cats. Uh, Stray Cats. Off All right. the top of my head. I will say in the general public's eyes, I think that they are rated where they should be. In your eyes, I'll say they're overrated. I think that you like them a little bit more than they are. Uh, Brian Setzer incredibly talented musician really goofy looking bastard but he's uh, the fattest skinny guy i've ever yeah. seen <laughs> yeah i i definitely i 
I like them. Uh, you know, it's, they got their own little niche. They kind of had that 50s vibe going on with a little more modern rock to them than, than your typical 50s band. And I, I you know, and like I said, if, if you're going to just include Brian Setzer with the Brian Setzer Orchestra, I think a really good band. I think you like them more than most. Well, I went, they, the last time they toured near us, and, and, and near us is, is a relative term. Yes. When they announced their uh, 40th anniversary uh, tour in 2019, I went on to get tickets. I said, ah, I got to see this. I got to see this. Closest they were playing? Ocean's Resort Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Oof. And I drove f- with the wife from Derry, New Hampshire to Ocean's Resort Casino in Atlantic City. And, yeah, they were, in my opinion, they had some misses. And uh, not everything's going to be a, a steaming pile of gold. But nope. uh, f- fantastic musicians. Always fun to see live. They put on a great show. For three guys, they put on a, on a fantastic ton, ton, show. Tons of energy, absolutely. All the energy you could ever ask and, and for and Bre- some left over. Brendan said Stray Cats. Catchy tunes that get stuck in your head. There you go. Absolutely. And, yeah, yeah that's, no, that's what sells records. No doubt about it. Yeah, and that's, that's just it. And I think fun. so. Uh, I, I would say that, you know, they're rated where they should be. Again, aside from you, I don't know anyone that loves them. Yeah. But I know a lot of people that like them and enjoy them. Myself, I, I enjoy Stray Cats. Yeah, they're fun. And any, any, anything that Brian Setzer's done, I enjoy. So I think yeah. as far as just you know, whole music, episode, music yeah. quality, I you could. It'll be the Squirrel and, and uh, Stray Cats show. We'll get a couple, you know, we'll get a couple crazy cat ladies out here with you. You guys can have a, 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 nice, yeah. little, uh, a nice little show. All right, Brendan fun. wants to throw out Dawkins. It reminds me of the old comedian in the in the eighties. Hey Dawkin, you suckin'. Get off the stage and I will say that for what they were, I think that they were a band that was rated what they should have been. Yeah. But I will say that George Lynch is an incredibly over, over overrated guitarist. I completely disagree with you. I think Really? I think he's terrible. He is the Kerry King of hair metal. <laughs> Yeah, I only I, that's what I look forward to is like, all right, let's see what what's let's see what George Lynch does here. That's it. That that was it. I I it was I didn't I mean, it's this is going to be a weird statement. I didn't shut Dawkin off when they came on the radio, which is a strange sentence because you don't hear Dawkin on the radio. No. But in the 80s you did, you know, AAF played him a lot, yes. DCN would play him when the, everything was hair metal, you would get Dawkin on the radio, but I think that a lot of people really liked them and I never quite understood what I got you there but but I don't quite want to say that they were overrated because they didn't have like the fandom of like Bon Jovi or Poison they Mm -hmm. weren't on that level yeah but I know a lot of people that liked them and they weren't a bad they weren't a terrible band but and I think they were better than a lot of the 80s hair metal yeah but I would say that they were right rated right where they should be but George Lynch is a very overrated guitarist go on YouTube and Find the interview between Chris Broderick, uh, former guitar player for Megadeth, and George Lynch. And they, it's two guys talking shop. It's the two of them, and they're sitting there, and they got their combo amps, and they're playing. And George Lynch gets on, and he, he's noodling some absolute crap. And Chris Broderick, Broderick whatever, whatever mode that he was playing, Broderick was like, oh, yeah, that's really cool. You know, I, I, I would play that, and I would do something like this. And Chris Broderick goes in and starts playing. And if you've ever seen Broderick play, he does like the eight-finger tap, and he's playing, and he's going back and forth. And George Lynch is watching him, and he looks up at the camera guy, and he laughs. He goes, you fucking guys actually expect me to play after that? Holy shit. Wow. And that will just let you know <laughs> that No kidding. I think George Lynch sucks as a guitar I... player. But the band themselves, I think they're rated where they should be. I don't think they're a great band. They're another one that... No one. I've never heard anyone say Dawkins their favorite band. I've never heard anyone say Dawkins great, but I know a lot of people who like him and enjoy him. Yeah, and then he went and did Lynch Mob, and that was a wicked sensation that we're not going to talk about. Yep. Uh, Brent, uh, Bob Krause says that George Lynch is an excellent guitar player. Bob, that's about that's Bob. It. That's why you play bass. <laughs> another another succinct statement by Bob Krause. He's an excellent guitar player, and we can just leave it at that. That's uh, it. Brennan said uh, an underrated guitarist, Steve Stevens mm. from Billy Idol mm. band. And I know he played in some hair metal band too, but. Billy Idol's hits, I believe, wouldn't be what they were if it wasn't for Steve Stevens being on those records. I don't think you could get. I, I don't think you could tell a studio musician, do what Steve Stevens did. And, and 
it's one of those ones, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the licks and the lines and the little, you know, uh, whatever. You don't notice it until you notice it. Absolutely. And that's it. I, I would say that he's an underrated guitarist. Yeah. Only because you never hear anybody talk about him, but I would certainly never put him in a top anything list. I'm not but going to see him at the channel. Yeah, def, def, definitely an underrated guitarist because people don't know about him and people, you know, when they find out the, the, the songs that he was part of with Billy Idol, I definitely think that he is a uh, an underrated, underappreciated guitarist. I'd yes. Underappreciated. Instead of underrated, I'll say he's underappreciated. Underappreciated. I think that's, that's, that's a better a, that's word. A, that's a good take. I like it. So, ooh, uh, I, 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 think, uh, I think Bob Krause put this one up uh, specifically for Jay McCarthy because he's, uh, he's saying, Judas Priest, the group is greater than the sum of the parts. When I was a teenager and listening to, you know, all, all sorts of things across the board, and th when, when Judas Priest was in their prime, let's say, I wasn't as much of a fan as the rest of the world was. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I liked them. I, I didn't... I, I, I enjoy them, but I wasn't running out to buy the new Priest album. I wasn't running out to buy tickets to see them. I, 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 I respect them. Yep. All that. I will say this. Rob Halford, Metal God. Absolutely. One of, one of the greatest voices in metal. Definitely. Uh, and I won't say that he's underrated or overrated. I think that he has that reputation of being one of the greatest vocalists, if you've ever heard him live. Yeah. He nails it live. He's not a studio vocalist like a right. lot of guys are. Phenomenal. But like Bob Krause said, I think he nailed it because... You know, you look at K.K. Downing and Glenn Tipton, not very talented guitarists, yeah. but the sum of the parts, those guys all playing together. Definitely. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you who any, who ever played drums for Judas Priest. I couldn't ever tell you who played bass for Judas Priest uh, because I was a guitar player. I knew Glenn Tipton and K.K. Downing. Yep. And obviously everybody knows Rob Halford. So, yeah. Did Mikey D play for them for I, a long time? I have no idea. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell can you. Can I have the bottle opener, please? Yes, you can. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. All right, look at that. So I, I, I agree, Bob Krause. We, I, we, I think, John, you agree with me, too. Some of the parts greater than any individual in the band. But I will say what makes that band is Rob Halford, and Rob Halford is in, in a league of his own. He's yes. a phenomenal vocalist. Uh, I, if Rodney Safretti's watching, I know Rodney, was he's your favorite vocalist of all time. Uh, I'm pretty sure. If it's not your favorite, he's like your top three, and he's great. Bob Krause with another great suggestion. Okay. I'm going to say... you got to tell me who it is first. Ian Anderson. Ian, who's Ian Anderson? Jethro Tull. Jethro Tull. See, I'm not a fan. Definitely. Any, any, any metal band that has flutes in it, you automate. It's like a band with keyboards and a band with flutes. You're out. They, I, I mean, lo locomotive breath. G g oh, man. It's fucking... They, they, were, they were just great. And he's still doing it. No. And he's... I, I like... 80 or something like that. I would say overrated. On, on I'm going to go underrated. Okay. It's like one of those sleepers. You hear a Jethro Tull song and you go, man, I forgot how fucking good they were and how good he is. That's all. That's my opinion. I was never a fan, and what made me even less of a fan is when Metallica lost the Grammy. That was a whole shit show. and That, and, uh, that, that was yeah. just stupidity beyond stupidity. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jethro Tull, had, it was the first year that the Grammys put out and said, we're going to finally give a Grammy for best metal performance, yeah. and they gave it to a band that hadn't put out an album in 20 years. That's right, and Alice Cooper and Lita Ford were standing there kind of stunned. They're like, ah, it's a... Uh, oh. Uh, and they even did a live shot of Metallica after they had just performed one. Yeah. The first metal band to perform on the Grammys, and they're standing back there like, yeah, we're, Getting ready. we're, yeah, we're ready to go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, acceptance speech, and they were like, crest of a name, Jethro Tull. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Whap, 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 whap. <laughs> After Billy Crystal had made the announcement, you know, like what you just said about the uh, uh, metal is, is uh, whatever. It's been ignored by the, by the industry, and now this, for the first time ever, here's Metallica playing one. And then you completely hose it by giving the award to someone who hasn't put out a, a song in 20 years. Yeah, and then he doesn't really realize that all of us at, at what, what was it, 80, 89? Yep. He's March of 89, I believe. And he's, he, he's talking to 15 and 16-year-olds, and he comes out with a joke that would have hit in the 60s. He comes out, he goes, that song, of course, was written by Steve Allen. And every old person in a suit was like, Ah, ha, 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 that's funny. And there's young people at home going, Who the fuck, Steve Allen? Right. I knew who he was, but, you know, I'm an idiot. So, Brendan, uh, kind of piggybacking on Bob with the uh, Judas Priest, ACDC with uh, Angus Young. 
Angus, Angus kind of took the spotlight from everybody. He was the one guy in the band that was an above average musician. Absolutely. And it, the band probably would have been, be- I don't know if they would have been better. Brennan said he would have, that ACDC would have been better if they had let other people uh, take sure. part in, in, in writing the songs. I just think that every song wouldn't have sounded like it came off the same album. ACDC's yeah. basically put out two albums in their lifetime. Uh, one with Bon Scott and one with Brian Johnson. And you can pretty much mix and match and you wouldn't know what song belonged on what album because everyone sounds the same. You get the different vocalists, but other than that, and that's 100% on Angus Young. And I, I, I think ACDC is a band that is, I might say, slightly overrated, only because they, they, they put out music for 40 years, mm-hmm. but there's no variety to what they do. Except for the song, not the album, for those about to rock. What really, that song always it it's it's what it's exactly what they do but it's done in a totally different way the you got was it still phil rudd playing on that yes he's i believe so a little behind the beat and it's just you know it's like he's slowly swinging and it's just powerful and brian johnson's voice was immaculate at the time but man i there's times when i can get lost in like a YouTube uh, rabbit hole, wormhole, a hole of ACDC, and just go, that, that, "Ooh, that, I forgot how how good they really, really were." That's not YouTube. That's you porn when you get lost in the a hole. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yes. Ooh, that other you. <clears throat> but yeah, so I would I would say that ACDC may be slightly overrated. I think that at times, and, and yeah. obviously, it, it, I it, absolutely. When you look at Back in Black, I think that's one of the great. It's second greatest selling album of all time next to Michael Jackson Thriller. Yep. And it's it still sells, you know, tens of thousands of copies, hundreds of thousands of copies today when people aren't buying albums, people still buy that classic album and it's a, it's a great album. Every song on it is great. But if you listen to that and you take a song off of any other album that's mm-hmm. within 2 to 3 years on that True. and you mixed it in, you wouldn't know it was from a different album because everything was the same. But if you are Coca-Cola, you've made Coca-Cola, except for when they try to do new Coke. You make Coca-Cola every year. People keep buying it. Why the fuck would you change it? They made their career off of it. And I, I said when we did our Metallica uh, on our episode one, mm-hmm. I said, if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. And I think that they tried to fix it with the Black Album and then with all the crap that they put out after that. Mm-hmm. They changed their, you know, they changed the secret sauce. They changed the recipe. Yeah. And I think they changed it too much. Uh-huh. ACDC never did that. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that Angus Young was writing everything and he was the, the main influence behind the band. And they probably would have been had a little more variety to their music had it yeah. been somebody other than Angus playing three chords right. over and over again. Yeah, and then you got you know, it's like a, like a, a, a it's going to be a recurring theme but that one you know Cliff playing bass it just it's it's there and you don't notice it until you notice it. Yep. It's just fantastic. They would they I love them. All right, uh Brendan B and Michael Shanker played in the Scorpions, did he not? Yes, and he also was in Michael Shanker group. That and you was he in UFO? I think he was. A brief stint? Yes, I think he was on a couple albums. As it were. The Michael Shanker group had a great, uh, that uh, that song, Anytime, in the late 80s, with, in the hair metal time. The, the, the singer that I, I don't even remember his name, but that came on AAF a lot. and I, He was popular, and I, I liked it. MS, MSG. Yep. Which we don't put in uh, Chinese food. No. Always order it without it. Yes. You save yourself a headache. Um, I, I, I'm, I really can't say whether he's over or underrated. He's another one of those people mentioned. People like him. I've never heard anybody say he was phenomenal. Obviously, yeah. I was a big fan of the Scorpions. I would say that the Scorpions is a band that's underrated, underappreciated. Definitely, definitely. I think that, and they were that rock band that kind of melted into the hair metal stuff. They really weren't a hair metal band. Their music, I didn't think, was really hair metal. It was just your straight rock and roll. Yes. And they just kind of fell into that because that's what everybody wanted back then. But, you know, he was in the Scorpions, and I, I was always a big fan of the Scorpions. I always thought that they were a very underrated band, another one that put out music for 30-plus years. Yes. It, it, I don't want to say it all sounded the same because they definitely had some varieties to their song. Mm-hmm. 
but I, it, they definitely always sounded like the Scorpions. If it wasn't broke. Exactly. Don't fix it. Yes. Except for that song, Winds of Change, made me want to throw up. It, you couldn't turn on MTV without hearing that song. But and that, was the, that was up. the spirit of the time. That was the, the zeitgeist, as it were. Be, the, the wall had come down, and the, the, they were doing the... Uh, they, they're finally letting bands play in, in the former Soviet Union. And uh, they did the, the Make a Wish Foundation or the Make a Make a Make a Difference Foundation when they flew all the bands over there and they the bands themselves they were like oh we're all sober now and yeah, they ended up calling it the Make a Drink Foundation. Make a drink. <laughs> that was funny, but yeah, the, oh the Berlin Wall had come down right there and then, and then he, the wind had changed and took a walk to Gorky Park, and then we got we in, we uh, imported that band Gorky Park from Russia. Oh my God, remember Terrible. them? Oh, speaking of three chords. One that's uh, a favorite of yours and a favorite of mine, George Thorogood. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. I would say George Thorogood, underrated. Bad. Yeah. Underrated guy. I Definitely. Think very entertaining. Uh, uh, allegedly, he's sober now, and <clears throat> that kind of disappoints me because almost all his songs were about drinking. So now he doesn't drink alone. So now he doesn't drink alone. Well, he drinks no. O'Doul's alone. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> he was always the guy, you know, you always said, if you could have a drink with anybody, who would it be? It was always George Thorogood. Good, but good, now he, But good. now he doesn't drink, so if I could have a drink with anybody, it wouldn't be George Thorogood. Well, he's funny. And uh, you're funny, too. Yeah, you're funny, too. Great. Uh, awesome. Mm-hmm. No, another one, great to see live. Doesn't disappoint. Tons of energy, I think. George Thorogood and the Delaware Destroyers. And the and Delaware. the Delaware Destroyers. Underrated Much less band. the Delaware Destroyers. Yes. And why did they drop the Delaware Destroyers? Do you know? Is there a story behind that? Because he because basically was the same band. The Baltimore Bombers were busy that week. <laughs> I just, I never understood why he went from George Thorogood and the Delaware Destroyers to just George Thorogood. Maybe it was uh, too much of a mouthful. Didn't want to work off the buzz by having to say all of that. Yeah, I just never knew because I always it was, as because, far as I knew it was the same band. They right. just dropped the the Delaware the Destroyers. De- Delaware Destroyers because he thing. drinks alone. He drinks alone. He wasn't drinking with the Delaware yeah. Destroyers. When, he had to. He said, "Guys." And when he drinks alone, he, he prefers to be by himself. And I always thought <laughs> that was one of the silliest lyrics. It yeah. fits the song yes, absolutely, it but yeah. it, it just doesn't make any it's sense, non, folks. Let's face it. Yeah. It's it. Uh, I mean, not everything. Not every song has to have. Meaning and give you chills and whatever. Sometimes I like to put on Donna Summer and you know put on my wife's underwear and dance around the house. I heard about that. Oh, it, we've all done that, that video coming up on episode eight. Ah. So, Michael not Sh- not Michael. every song needs. Oh, what what do we got? Michael Schenker was voted number one guitarist by Burn Magazine in 2016. That's kind of shocking. I'm actually going to have to look into that because I, I definitely and, and you know what I I probably need to to listen to it a little bit more because like I said I knew him mostly from the Scorpions and there was never really any shredding solos in that you know they were entertaining solos but never well, that anything was that Rudolph you, was Rudolph Schenker was in that the Scorpions but wasn't he in the Scorpions too at one point he I might they have both been were. I, they, they, it was probably interchangeable was like just, Gallagher just his some, brother yeah, and his, just some, his, just yeah. some commie bastard so maybe <laughs> maybe I'm wrong maybe maybe it was Rudolph maybe I'm confusing that. I, I, Brendan and Bob, you guys would know. You're both big Scorpions fans. Was, was Michael Schenker in or was it Rudolph Schenker? And I'm getting them wrong. I think it's Rudy Schenker. Rudolph. Uh, Bob Krause, Def Leppard, overrated and milking the tragedy of the drummer losing his arm. I'll get, let me start on Def Leppard. I do not know how they went from on through the night, high and dry, pyromania, serious. You know, they were one of the new wave of British heavy metal bands. How in that album came out in '86? Two words. The the, the the hysteria album came out in '86. Yep. I don't know how they went from that to the garbage that was. Two words. Hysteria. Hair metal. They, yeah, but... they fell. They were one of those bands that fell right into the whole hair metal thing, and oh. they just started putting out cheesy pop songs. It was. But I, I agree. So I would say, oh. much like Metallica, I'm going to say you can take their career and split it down the middle. They were very underrated yep. from 86 back. They were great. They were phenomenal. Like, yep. Yeah. yep. High and dry, great album. Um, I think it's when they kicked out alcoholic Pete Willis and got Phil Collins. That, that, that could be. Well, wasn't, wasn't the other guitarist there that drank himself to death? Wasn't he in the band? Steve Clark. Steve Clark. Yeah, they should have yep. kicked him out they first. Should, apparently, he took care of that on his own. <laughs> Ooh, okay. He's uh, dead. What's he gonna do? Hot take. Haunt me. Uh, but yeah, so Def Leppard, I would say that they were underrated. Their older stuff is underrated. Their newer stuff, I think, is dramatically overrated. Mm-hmm. And 
Dave Rosado, my drummer, drummer for Oxidize, if you're watching, how come you can't come up here and play drums with one arm when the guy from Def Leppard could? I'm disappointed in that, Dave. <laughs> you know, we could work something out. You can play with one arm. I, I, I think you can do it. <laughs> that made me uh, chuckle. Uh, on the theme of everything sounds the same, rat. Overrated. Very, very. 100%. They were one of those bands that just... I don't think that there was anything. A lot of I know a lot of my friends always say what a great guitarist Robin Crosby was. Maybe for a hair metal guitarist, but for a, 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 a real guitar player, Warren D. Martini was the guy. He was a good. He was a he was a he good was guitar better. player. Yep, he was but, better. Yeah, it was. A, I don't know. One of those but, ones where you go. I'm not going to put too much stock into this. I kind of like that song. That's okay. I'm not going to shut that one off. Then they do Way Cool Junior and you and you. And then you just like that's garbage. Yeah, and they were done. they were another band that started out. Their older stuff was more that Def Leppard, Rocky kind of stuff, and they fucking headfirst into the whole hair metal thing. Bon Jovi just, did the same thing. Yeah, but their bon, first two albums sucked. weren't they, they, all that horrible. They weren't. They weren't that bad. I will give you that with Bon Jovi. Yeah. But another one, hair metal. Hair metal, by the way, the original boy bands. A lot of them, yes. A lot of it, it, everything was copy paste. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of those bands were hey. Cinderella is really good. Let's have Britney Fox, and they'll look everybody. Everybody had to have the same hairstyle That's put that to, played yeah. the same instrument. Absolutely, and they were literally. If you put up a picture of those two bands side by side, you couldn't tell who was who. Right. It was it was copy paste. That's just, where they came from. They, it, they, yeah. The A and R guy goes, "That sold. This is gonna sell. This is gonna sell, and I'm gonna make it sell." Right. So and you, you're being duped. Yeah. You had Electra Records and Atlantic wanted the same band. Yep. Because it was selling. So you had all the competing record labels, and they had those copy paste bands all over the place. Rat, definitely one of them. And it's a good example of the power of a record company. Years ago, in uh, 1990, an old band of mine at Derringer's in Brockton, we opened for a band called Child's Play, right? They were from Baltimore. They were a fantastic rock band. Yep. They were really good. Yes, it fell into that hair thing, but that was what... So, and they, they, they had a... Uh, you say Child's Play, and I just expect Chris, Chris Hansen to come out and go, hey, why don't you have a seat right <laughs> over here? They were phenomenal. They were a really, really great band. They were great live. They had whatever. They shared the label with another rock band called Trouble Tribe. They had a couple of videos on MTV. And the big... They were on uh, Chrysalis Records. Chrysalis, at the time, had three rock bands. Child's Play, Trouble Tribe, and... Slaughter. <laughs> who got? But who got the funds? Who got the? Who the, got the backing? The pre Slaughter. The prettiest band. There you go. And they, so these other guys are like, uh, yeah, we're all right. Well, I don't think we have fuel for the bus to even get back home. You know, because because the that they go for. All right, these guys are selling. Yep. Let's let's do it. All right. So uh, Bob Krause, Warlock. Never heard of him. I I don't even Was know. That Doro Pesh. I, I don't know, Bob. Was that Doro Pesh's band, Warlock? I just it doesn't doesn't ring a bell for me. So I'm gonna say, not rated. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then Bob says, "Yep, Doro Pesh, absolutely." Boom, nailed Boom. it. Underrated. Yeah, um, I'm gonna say overrated. I thought Doro Pesh was they just people liked her because she was an attractive female playing metal, much like Lita Ford. Overrated, garbage, trash. Love her in the Runaways. Yeah, uh, see, I'm, I've never listened to The Runaway, so I couldn't say one way or the other. Sherry Curry and Joan uh, Jett, excuse I, me. Bre Brendan, Quiet Riot. Loved Quiet Riot, like the rest of the world at the time. And Formed what, by Randy Rhodes. We, uh, and that was a band, the first couple albums I thought were fantastic, and yeah. then they just fell off the face of the earth. Yeah. So I would say, I, th I think they're, they're rated where they should be. I think yeah. they, they had their time in the sun, and they kind of faded away. And If they were still trying to make records right now, and... Actually having hits, I think it would be. Kinda, I would say overrated. Yes, I would think it'd be kind of tough with Kevin DeBro being dead and but. Frankie Benali. Yeah, yep, and uh, Rudy Sazo has been in every band that's ever existed. <laughs> I think he was in Oxidize for a couple of weeks. Yeah, wasn't he? I think everybody was We've, for bass players, anyways. All right, so Brendan, MTV also had to do with that flashy videos with no substance. That was the the whole hair metal thing. Yep, if you had a great video. People loved it. And you know what brought that on, actually? Michael Jackson, the Thriller video. Definitely. The Thriller, Definitely. The, the thriller video made the song. Thr thriller was a it was an okay song. I mean, even, you know, uh, Michael Jackson. Hey, while you're over there, getting more beer in the yeah. fridge. Ju you know, fun fact about Thriller, you know that song? It was originally called Starlight. 
I did not know that. There's a I, version. I on, did not know that. There's a ver <laughs> Yes. There's a version on YouTube. Look it up. Okay. It's it, it's the song absolutely sucks. That song probably would not have been the hit that it was. No. Because if you remember, they, they did this whole big spiel about the... Y yes, sir, that's the right one. They did this whole big spiel, spiel about the video for it, and they did a, a, this big giant premiere on it and everything. John Landis. And it was phenomenal. It was great. I remember sitting around waiting for it to come on TV and to watch the video, and the video made the song better. And I think once MTV realized that, then they turn around and they talk Billy Squire into doing that fucking video that ruined his career. <laughs> you know exactly what we're talking me about. Rock Me Tonight. Rock Me Tonight. Ruined Billy oh. Squire. By the way, Billy Squire, underrated. I, absolutely. I fucking Tremendously love Billy Squire. Tremendously underrated and probably would have put out a lot more albums had he not done that video. If you didn't dance around in his pajamas. Yeah. In, yeah. In, in, in pink silk pajamas. If you've never seen the video, Billy Squire, Rock Me Tonight. Great, great fucking tune. You'll never want to listen to it again if you watch the video because it'll completely creep you out. It's three minutes of, of watching a famous musician's career crumble. Yeah, it just it's completely... It's so sad. And if you if you go in and you look, there's a, there's a video on YouTube. I, I mention this all the time, but there's a video on YouTube that you can go and find, and it talks about how that video ruined his career. It shows where his record sales and his concert tickets and how they were going through the roof. And he was at the top of the fucking world. What a and shame. And once that video came out... What a shame. Just completely trashed the guy's career. And there's arguments. The record company said that Billy Squire wanted that for the video. And Billy Squire says, no fucking way under no circumstances did I ever want that video. He said he was against it from the beginning. And they convinced, the, they convinced Billy Squire that it would make him more popular. I'm sure it made him more popular in P-Town, but that's pretty much the only place that made him more popular. It's like the opposite of, like, you know when they say right place, right time mm -hmm. for an artist to, to, yep. to skyrocket, to, to stardom and fame if and he, fortune? If he did that video today, his career would fucking skyrocket. But, but it's the, it's the, the reverse 80s. end of it. It's, it's wrong place, wrong time. Yep. And it just sunk him like a fucking torpedo. Like a Led Zeppelin. Yes, like a Led Zeppelin. Speaking of... Uh, and, 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 and Led Zeppelin, let, let's not go there because um, I fucking absolutely hate Led Zeppelin. Really? Dis I, I, one of the, I will say probably the most overrated band of all time. I will agree. The most overrated guitarist of all time. Yep. Uh, I, I won't say that Robert Plant is the most overrated vocalist of all time because I actually think that he does have some talent. Mm -hmm. he's, I think he's definitely overrated, but not the most overrated. But the band as a whole, they've been sued so many times for plagiarism. It's pretty crazy. I mean, most of their biggest hits, they've been sued for plagiarism. And if you listen to the other band that plays their song that came out years before... And then you listen to Led Zeppelin, you're like, how can they not? But they were really obscure stuff that Jimmy Page just kind of put his own spin on. But it just to, to me, they were the original boy band. They, they were the one that started it where the record companies just didn't give a shit. And they were just rehashing old stuff. And just I think that Led Zeppelin's trash. And I'm going to get a lot of flack for that. And you know what? I don't fucking care. I, I do another. I do the same thing. I agree. They're definitely, definitely overrated. I can see where at the time and the place they influenced so many people. I remember reading an interview with Steve Vai. <laughs> what Bob, Bob Krause said, move on from Led Zeppelin. You don't deserve to comment. <laughs> all right, so, all right, Steve Vai. Objection. Uh, I was reading an article uh, with Steve Vai when I was like, I don't know, 14, 15, whatever. And, um, you could read when you were 14? Yes. Was it a picture book? It was. It was a big Jackson guitar. And it was nice and colored, and it was great. Um, I lost my train of thought. Led Steve Vai, and he, they said, what made you uh, want to play guitar? And he said, when I first heard Jimmy Page's Heartbreaker solo, uh, solo, guitar solo in Heartbreaker, and I, listened, I went and listened to that because my sister had a bunch of uh, uh, Zeppelin tapes, and I listened to it, and I went, oh, I can do this. <laughs> Bingo. I, I, I didn't understand. I don't get it. I, I, I didn't understand how that solo. I mean, like I, like I said, maybe it was the time that there wasn't too much to choose from when it came to. They were groundbreaking at the time because they were they were loud and electric and and, and, and on and fire. And nobody was out. stealing music the way they did. Nobody, not even Elvis. All right, so we got a double. We'll get to Elvis in a minute. We got a double here. Two people, same band. 
We are sexual perverts. Blackie. Wasp. Yes. Um, I'm going to give them I a... I wasn't throwing out slurs. I'm talking no, about the singer yeah. from the band. <laughs> I'm going to give them a, 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 a rated where they should be. I think that they are a good band. Yep. I think they got some good songs. Another band that kind of fell into that hair metal thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that it really affected their, their music style so much. Because mm-hmm. I think they were always just that generic rock and roll band. And they, they were never trying to be too flashy with yep. their music. They went a little flashy with the image, which I thought was overkill, but not the band Overkill. They weren't that good. Nobody's that. Oh, good. the men at work. Oh, the men at work song. Yeah, <laughs> love that. Song. So I, I, I think that they're they're rated where they should be. It's a, it's a it's a band I enjoy them. You know, they got a, they got a, a bunch of good tunes. Blind in Texas, love that song. Good song. Uh, I, I think that they're they're you know screaming until you like it. Another good tune that was from uh, Gremlin soundtrack. Yeah, you could never get away with that now. No, definitely not. Scream yeah, until you, you like it. it. Yeah, good. That tune, sounds uh, a little rapey to me. Just a little, just a wee bit. And fun fact, Blackie Lawless, and this you'd think this was a setup, but it's not a setup, did a couple of fill-in gigs with one of my favorite bands, the New, the York, New York Dolls, Dolls. when he was a, a, a young, a young uh, whippersnapper. So there's that. Go Google it. So if we're going to talk, shir- we're gonna talk shirts, I'm going to talk my shirt here. We got my, uh, whoop, let me get over this way here, my third floor guitar shirt. All right. You guys should see at the bottom, we got some sponsors at the bottom. We got Karina's Cakes. We've talked about them before. And we also got third floor guitars. Yeah. Dom Frizzy wearing his shirt today. I, uh, I, I took it out from underneath the cat litter box and put it on. Dom, just for you, I told you I was going to wear it today. But on, on the bottom of the screen, you should see, I don't know which side it's on. Oh, the, th- this side is Karina's Cakes. And uh, this side is third floor guitars. If you own a guitar, you need work done on it. You want a Floyd Rose put on it. You want uh, Seymour Duncan blackout pickups put on it. Dom's your guy. He's a big telly uh, guy. Loves his Fenders. Loves his Gibson. Doesn't matter what you have for a guitar. If you got if you got a stringed instrument, you need some work done on it. You want it set up. You want it tuned up. Bring it to Dom. He will pull it together. At, no doubt about it. Third floor guitars. So we're showing off shirts. I'm going to show off my shirt here today. Too. Now, all the uh, us as musicians, we all we love we love our instruments, the same way some people love the kids, right? Yeah, and you can't pick a favorite, or you can't at least you can't tell the other yeah, one who's the favorite. favorite. But that, you wouldn't take your kid. That's, you, my, that's my favorite, by the way. If your kid's sick, you wouldn't take him to a fucking car wash to heal them nope you'd take them to the best goddamn doctor you can find absolutely so why take one of your goddamn strained kids to someplace else like one of those big name stores that rips you (laughs) off and sucks yep or send it to a guy that that'll uh, bring it back in 18 months you go to dom at third floor guitars that's third floor guitars.com facebook it's third floor guitars yeah it's on the page if you, if you kind of uh, I can't zoom in on facebook.com but, slash third floor guitars yep it's there don't bring your kids to a car wash alright so here we go uh, Joe Satriani Steve Vai could do things I can't funny part about that is Joe Satriani gave lessons to Steve Vai also gave lessons to Alex Golnick from Testament and Kirk Hammett from Metallica yes he was the guy that everybody in LA went to for their their lessons and then Everybody talked about what a great guitar player he was, and somebody said, hey, I'm recording an album. And then, boom, Surfing with the Alien. Boom, yep, great and album. And here we are, 30 years later. Joe Satriani, I think that he's very highly rated, and yeah. I still think he's underrated. Yeah. I think he's a lot better than people give him credit for. Definitely. He's one of those guys, I'm not a, a huge fan of instrumentals. Me either. But Joe Satriani, the way he writes his song is almost the guitar is singing to you. Where when you're that, hearing him play, it's it's like you could you could hear somebody singing as the way he plays. That's how I feel about Jeff Beck. Yeah, I, I could, uh, yeah, uh, listen to Jeff Beck. I could listen to him all day long. Instrumental. All right. How about the Cult? Oh, the Cult. Damn. Not not they, not, not, the, not the Blue Oyster one. The regular one. Or the Blue Waffle one. Yeah. <laughs> they were <laughs> Google Blue Waffle. Yeah. Lemon Party. Dog. Dog. Uh, Underrated, absolutely underrated. They were, they were. Billy Duffy was Gretsch. Man, he was great. Ian Asprey loved his voice. I, I, there was a lot of people that was stepping up to the plate saying, "He's a just a rip off of Jim Morrison." Morrison yep. Who the fuck in their right mind would rip Look off Jim, Jim Morrison? Morrison. <laughs> yes, I, I will say this. Ian uh, Asprey was his own man. Great guy. As a band, I will say, rated where they should be. Ian Astbury underrated. 
Great, definitely. great vocalist. Definitely, good definitely. band, really good band. Love them. Ian Astbury, very underrated vocalist. I think Love he them. is got a phenomenal, very powerful voice. Yep. And uh, definitely, like you said, who wants to rip off Jim Morrison? You know, De Dennis Larry said it best. We need a three-hour movie about the Doors. No, we don't. I'm drunk. I'm nobody. I'm drunk. I'm famous. I'm drunk. I'm fucking dead. There you That's go. It. No need to watch the Doors. Movie. Most overrated band in history is the Doors. The Doors. So. I, I will. I, I'm not, I won't say most overrated band in history. I've already said that that's Led Zeppelin, but I'll I'll say that they're probably right up there, maybe number two or number three. Actually, I don't they, trust they, a band without a bass player. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm, I'm going to say it. <laughs> they're going to be at least number four on my list because I I, I already said Zeppelin was number one, but I, I have a two and a three, and I know you're going to disagree with two, but I think you might agree with me on three. But I I would definitely uh, say the Doors are one of the most overrated bands, and I will say this. Most of their record sales, I bet if you go and look, came after that fucking movie. Oh, definitely. Everybody, when the movie came out, everybody became a huge fan of The Doors. And yep. I'm just like, yeah, come on. You yeah. weren't a fan. You couldn't name fucking two songs by them before. And, and I, I don't want to say that they were a terrible band, but I just think all the fucking hype around them and what a genius Jim Morrison was, it yeah. just kind of pushes them down for me. I just get sick of hearing it. It's like and when it's, people throw around the word hero, it loses its meaning. Exactly. When, you when, when, everybody's when everyone's a hero. a hero, no one's a hero. When he everyone's rescued a, a kitten, genius. He rescued a kitten from a tree. He's a hero. And it's like, no, he's not. My dad used to rescue kittens from trees. He was a firefighter. That's what they fucking do. It's their job. Right. But you, 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 Jim, when everyone's a genius, no one's a genius. And Jim Morrison, in my opinion, was not a genius. I agree. I uh, over, Very overrated doors. No doubt. When one door opens, a, a bathtub, uh, something. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tipper Gore Nightmare. Twisted Sister. Oh, they were fun. And D. Snyder, I, I liked his voice. He had a good, he had a good uh, strain. Yeah, you know, a good a rasp. He had a powerful voice. Very powerful. He was fun. I'm... Um, I loved his uh, appearance in front of the PMRC, in front of the Senate. I thought it was that great. was fucking awesome. Good for D. And I and I, I will say this: that's another band that I think the the sum of the parts w was greater. Yeah. Than the bands themselves. D. Snyder, great front man. The rest of that band. J.J. French, great guitar player. Yeah, but I think that they were just all. Everyone else in that band, I think, was just generic. Yeah. They no, nobody ever said, "I want to be able to play guitar like J.J. French." Nobody. Because, because if you could play guitar, you could probably play it better than J.J. French. But doesn't make him a bad guy, but I just no. think that's one of those bands where everyone as an individual was just, meh. But D. Snyder drove that band. I would say that um, I think they're rated about where they should be. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't think they're over or under. Uh, maybe slightly under because people don't give D. Snyder the credit that he gets. Yeah. By the way, shitty actor, uh, shitty screenwriter. If you've ever seen the movie there that he had there, uh, Captain Howdy, awful. Uh, oh yeah, was, was he trying to do he horror a, movies? He was or playing, something? A, yeah, he was playing a serial killer. And it hell, was just, hell queef or yeah, something. It, like it that. was, it was, it was kind of goofy. So mm. yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Armored Saint. Oh man, I remember. And uh, Chemical Euphoria was a great song by them. Uh, and oh, Dave Pritchard, the what's, guitar what, player, died of cancer in the 80s. Yeah, he, long, long time ago. Yeah, man. They were good. I, I, I liked Armored Saint. Not a fan. Nah. I, uh, but I don't, I don't want to say that they were overrated. They were just uh, there. They were just exactly one of those bands that was just there. Yeah. I think that they just, they, they, they got the credit they deserved, which wasn't much. Yeah. They were just there. All right. Uh, what about Tesla? I was, Brennan, great, great, great. When we were just talking about, uh, uh, manuf uh, not manufactured bands, uh, 80s and uh, quote-unquote hair bands, I was going to bring up Tesla and say they were very underrated until Love Song came out. Yep. Their first... The five-man acoustical jam. Excellent. And the one of the only bands, I think, that deserved and perfectly executed a Rolling Stones cover. You don't cover the Rolling Stones. I'm sorry. You, you just... Unless you're Devo and you do satisfaction with funny hats and a little baby in the crib, and that's, that, that's acceptable. The they did Mother's Little Helper, and it was and I thought it was great. That was a fun album at the time, but there, the, I loved the angle they were going at. Another, uh, another band that I think fell into the hair metal thing that wasn't a hair metal. Right, band. right, right. They, they were a great rock. They really band. were. I I can't personally name one member of the band. Uh, Jeff Keith was a singer. Uh, Tommy Hannon was one of the guitar players. Jeff uh, built something skioch. 
And uh, Brian, Brian Wheat was the bass player, and the drummer was forgettable. He had a big nose and a mullet. I, they were one of the bands that were kind of lumped into that hair metal thing that I actually enjoyed. Yeah, I, they I, were I, fun. Was, I wasn't a huge fan, but mm -hmm. uh, definitely was a, you know, it was enjoyable music. They weren't overly into the hair metal thing. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they, they had the long hair, and, but they didn't do the hairspray and makeup like bands like Poison and Warren because they didn't need to because their music was good enough. So they didn't have to really get into that. They were lumped into that category as being hair metal, but they didn't really have the, They weren't glam. They didn't yep. have. They didn't have that. We we look like chicks with dicks. They right. they, they kind of backed off from that. Definitely a great rock band. I think that Tesla. I'll even say slightly underrated. For for as, for as talented as the band was, they I will say Tesla slightly underrated. Yeah, I I enjoy, <clears throat> I enjoyed them. All right, now we we need to bring in our uh, our moderator. We need one because we're gonna fight right now. Uh oh. Because I am gonna tell you that I said Led Zeppelin was the number one mm -hmm. most overrated band of okay. all time. The number two. Hit mo me. Most overrated band of all time. Let me see. Let me hear it. Kiss. Oh, hey. Kiss. The downfall. Give it to me. I can take it. The downfall of rock music and what brought us hair metal was everybody wanting to be like Kiss. The hairspray, the yeah. makeup, the stage shows, the cheesy fucking songs. If if it wasn't for the pyrotechnics and the costumes and the makeup, Kiss would still be playing in their mom's garage. Nobody would have ever fucking heard of him. And the world would be a better place without fucking Gene Simmons because he is probably the biggest asshole, the biggest pretentious douchebag on planet Earth, <laughs> let alone in music. <laughs> I fucking hate Kiss. And anyone that thinks that one, any one member of that band has ever had talent is clueless. I uh, fucking hate them. In fact, I'm going to go one step further, and I'm going to knock Led Zeppelin down to number two, and I'm putting Kiss at number one. I fucking hate him that much. I respect your opinion. Ra Randy, my cousin Randy, if you're watching, I'm sorry, but I fucking hate him. I, I, absolutely. Randy's favorite band. Hey, we don't always have to agree on everything. I, lo I, I loved Kiss. I loved... Uh, the, but I've got... They had some errors in their eras... See what I did? Errors in their errors. Yes. Um, and the 83 to, to uh, uh, we'll put the makeup back on, Kiss. I They never took the makeup off. They just changed it. Yeah, they, I enjoyed they went, they some. They went from the black and white face paint to trying to look like hookers on the fucking, on the Vegas strip. Like, or as Gene puts them, he goes, I, I was trying to dress up to keep up with all the other bands, and I end up looking like a football player in a tutu. And it, <laughs> <laughs> or a football player in a tutu. Yeah. So he, uh, uh, he, yeah, I, I, I hated that whole era. I liked a couple of the songs. I knew what they were doing, but, and obviously I was too young. My first memory of Kiss was going into like a Hallmark store with, with my mother, and there was, a, there was a big poster, and I was like, ooh, wow, look at that. And then Christmas morning, 1978, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park was on TV, and I watched it, and I was like, whoa, holy shit, look at this, this is crazy. At the time, didn't even know they were... A band. a band, yep, whatever. But uh, when I started <laughs> listening to them in the '80s, I was going back as far as I could, and I when I got Kiss Alive, changed everything. Fucking loved it. I know I, 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 I to me, loved it. Loved the songs. I loved the first uh, three, four albums. Love. I, I, you can't go wrong with the first Kiss record. It was it was filled with classics. Bill Coin, the manager, and Neil Bogart from the record company knew exactly what they were doing. When they saw these guys and said, Well, yep, here you go. I know a lot of it's manufactured and a, lo guys, a lot of the stories in their books are uh, yeah, you know, whatever. Gene Simmons, I banged twenty two thousand women. It's like, yeah, that means you've given two thousand inches of cock. We've seen your sex tape there. <laughs> and giving everyone herpes. Yeah. That's nothing to be proud of. So, Although, he, uh, he, he, had, he had a great line. He was on Oprah Winfrey, and she, she interviewed him and said, yes. you've had sex with over 2,000 women? And he said, yes. And she's like, you weren't worried about get, getting VD or getting women pregnant? And he says, if, if you were jumping out of a plane, wouldn't you wear a parachute? Great line. Other than that, I fucking hate the band. That's the only thing that they've ever given me that, that was uh, of, of any value in my life. That's it. I, 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 I enjoy them. Like I said, not every song, not every uh, music has to have meaning. Sometimes you just want to beat. And uh, 
<laughs> Sometimes you just want a beat. Sometimes you just want a good beat. You can dance to it there, Denny Terrio. Yeah. <laughs> I give it a 10. Queensryche. Jeff Tate can still do it to this day. One of probably top, I, I, I don't want to say top five, maybe top ten vocalists of all time, Jeff Tate. Phenomenal. I got to give you this. And live, pulls it off. He can still do it to this day. He's, yep. he's He is great. I, I got to tell you this. I did not like them until Operation Mindcrime. Loved Operation Mindcrime. Thought and it was and great. That, was, that was the first concept album that I ever listened to mm -hmm. where it tells a story from beginning to end. Yes. Listen to every song on it. Love every fucking song on it. Talented musicians. Great song structure. Wrote great songs. Absolutely loved it. Huge Chris fan. DeGarmo. Damn. Yep, yeah. Yep. yep. V very underrated guitar player, Chris DeGarmo. Not, he wouldn't be in like a top 10 guy for me, but definitely uh, I think he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. Queensryche, I think, doesn't get the credit they deserve. But they turn into complete douchebags and all the infighting and completely ruin that band because they yeah. were more worried about money than they were about anything else and and I, and I think the hair metal stuff got a little bit too and you know when they put out the album empire i think that kind of you know they started it wasn't a terrible album but they started to fall off a little bit when they put that that, mm -hmm. that album out and I, pretty much everything they've done since then has been fucking hot garbage yeah i you know i i, I didn't I think the last new single I heard from them was Jet City Woman, and that was in, uh, what, 1990? Yeah, and that was a good tune. And Loved I, that song. It, I like, it was a good song. And, uh, oh, the uh, Silent Lucidity, 91. That was a huge It, it was hit. a huge hit, and it was so much of a Pink Floyd ripoff. Yeah. It just, it, that didn't do it for me when the bands went with those really limp dick fucking Everyone uh, had to songs. have, you yeah, had, had to had have, have one on, on your and it was And it was always the second release. You had the rocking song was your first one, so it was Jet City Woman was the first one, and it was fucking, it hit, and it was rocking, and then they went with some fucking wimpy, limp dick, ballady, crappy junk. Yeah. Well, but uh, they got sucked into the hair metal thing, just like everybody else. Yeah. And I think that that completely knocked that band down. Ooh, and, and Bob Kraus, I got one that I'm going to agree with you here. Black Sabbath is very underrated. Totally. 100%. And they get a shit ton of credit, and I don't think it's enough. They started You're right. They started heavy metal. Yep. They, they took all the, the – I don't want to say they took all the melody out of it, but they made metal what it was. They gave it that angst and that – that, that that build up and that you know that anger and that just they made it that dangerous and that exactly and scary and that is what started there was no heavy metal before black sabbath that's right and they're the ones that started it <clears throat> without black sabbath you don't have any of your metal bands today that's true even you hear guys say oh yeah i'm not a fan of black sabbath and it's like you wouldn't have the music you have today without black sabbath but i would also say this and i'm, I'm going to kind of jump right from one to the other sure. i loved every black sabbath album with Ozzy. Okay. I don't like anything that they've done without Ozzy. With Dio, Dio and the other guy? And I will say this. I don't like any of Ozzy's solo stuff. That was all manufactured garbage. It's pop music. It's radio rubbish. Trash. Not a fan. So, all right. And uh, if my cousin Mark is watching, I'm sorry. Because he's a, he's a huge Ozzy fan. Love Ozzy and Black Sabbath. Don't like any of his solo stuff. Not a fan. Love it, Ozzy's. Too poppy. Love Ozzy's commitment to it, though. It's he's all got, he knows. Guy's like 90 years old, can't speak, can't walk, can't, can't wipe his own ass, but he can still get up on stage and kind of sing. My youngest daughter went to see him with Black Sabbath uh, she, she, in 2016, and, and uh, she filmed the video and shared it with me and said, and, and, they were playing Iron Man, and Iron Man's a slow song anyway, right? Yep. And it was half that speed because he can't keep up anymore. It's like this time... It's 2016. You retire. Like, there's no shame in just walking away and going, I want to live the rest of my life. They don't owe us anything. No. You know what I'm saying? Definitely not. They don't owe us any. And, and, and a conversation that we had, speaking of not owing anything, uh, we'll, we'll hit right up with the, the Rolling Stones. They, that, that's a band that since probably 1980, everything that, not everything. 95% of what they've released since mm -hmm. 1980, I think, is hot trash. Okay. But prior to that, the legendary. Legendary. Great, great fucking rock the and roll. Great fucking band. Only word for it is legendary. Legendary. But I think that they, they've pretty much had a cash grab at this point on, and everything that they've released since then, I think, is just lukewarm, mediocre garbage. I love Tattoo You. That was a... Uh, there, there's, there's a... Some gems on there. Uh, they when they but then they they like 
I know they, they appeared on other people's things, and Mick Jagger did the Billy Squire dance with David Bowie and Dancing in the Street. I don't know how that didn't end his career. <laughs> it should have ended both Mick of Jagger's career. a fucking interesting dude. Um, he, he, he came up... What was it? The uh, Steel Wheels in 1990 or 91. That was their big comeback. That was their big sponsored comeback. Sponsored by Budweiser. Yeah, and and they're was, going on a big, huge stadium tour. And it was like... It was trash. Man! But I was like... Looking yeah, back 30 but, years ago... These guys are old as shit now. Now they're 30 years later and they're still old as shit and they're still doing it. Yeah. Now, but 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 let me say this. Mm -hmm. You can tell how serious a band is about whether or not they're still writing music or they're still living off of their past. Yeah. Because if you go to see the Rolling Stones in concert today, they probably play three songs from Tattoo You On. And everything they play is the old stuff. Yeah. Because that's what people enjoy. And right. that's when they were good. Everything that they write now is hot trash, and they don't play it. Metallica, same thing. They they play very little off of Load and Reload and Death Magnetic. It's the first four albums mm -hmm. and the Black album, and some of the new stuff. But it's eighty percent old stuff. Yeah. Rolling Stones, same thing. When they play live now, they play ninety percent of their old stuff because that was the good stuff, and everything else is just so that they can put out another album. Unlike Kiss, that hasn't released an album. Thankfully, I hope they continue to not. But they still have their farewell tour. That's a farewell tour. Volume twelve are they on now? That's uh, yeah. We didn't even get into that, and I like I, I I don't I despise that about them. I I I don't care about any of that. You know, like I, stop with the yep. that, talk about a cash grab. All right, Bob Kraus, Ramstein, Ramstein. Don't know Stein. Enough, don't know enough about them. Duhast. It du makes Hast. me want to yeah. have some uh, Polska kielbasa. Uh, see, uh, but it, but they they they're German, not Polish, but that's okay. Then I'm going to have a bratwurst and there call go, it a day. They're going to have a brat. Um, every uh, time that I, I hear Rammstein, all I think of is uh, German porno music or <laughs> rave music. That's <laughs> all it reminds me of. Uh, I don't want to say it's bad. I just think it's one of those bands where all of this stuff kind of sounds the same and mashes into each other. Bob says the best concert that he's ever been to uh, was Rammstein. They might put on a great live show. I've never seen them live. But uh, it was one of those things that it's catchy. Their songs are, I almost want to say that they're poppy. They're not poppy. They got a nice hook and a nice groove to their songs. And we it's... interrupt this broadcast to bring you an important message from Brendan. Uh-oh. Was Motorhead brought up? Uh, Motorhead. Lemmy is, is God in heaven as God with Cliff Burton seated at his right hand, looking down and blessing this pod on all of us and Wishing us good luck, giving us a Jack and Cope salute, and a pack of Marlboros, and a pack of Marlboros, and a video poker game at his fingertips at all time. Motorhead. Lemmy is God. Motorhead is fucking fantastic. Underrated. Fight me. Very underrated. Great rock band, and, and they, to me, they're more of a rock band than they are a metal band. They're like a hard rock, heavy rock his, than a metal band, but they just phenomenal. His soul is in. The blues and R and B, yep. and it's hard to distinguish that when you're listening to Mean Machine or a fucking Bomber, but it's there. He was the fucking man. Love Motorhead, absolutely. Ooh. Ugly, the, the the two ugliest men alive at one point were Joey Ramone and uh, and Let Me Kill Meister. Mm -hmm. Now that they're gone, I, I think it's me and me. Yeah, there we go, Moose and Squirrel. Moose and Squirrel. Yep, definitely Motorhead, no doubt about it, 100%. Oh, Mark came right in on the Aussie stuff. Hey, perfect diamond, Mark. By the way, love Black Sabbath with Aussie. Just not a fan of his uh, his solo stuff. You do it well, though. Hey, it looks good on you. No. <laughs> Here's a fun little twist to uh, Aussie Black Sabbath. Randy Rhodes, when he uh, recorded, tracked his solos, he didn't use too many effects. He just tripled his solos. Yep. And I, I don't know about the technical shit, but... Uh, he would add off notes in, say, the second take, and he would duplicate it perfectly. So that's what you hear different sounds, mm -hmm. and it sounds like it's, um, it's got some delay and, and, and a little um, chorus on it. Yep. Tony Iommi did the same fucking thing. He would play two different solos. It, it, ah, I don't know. I, I don't know how he did it and made it cohesive and sound great. 
Brendan B. in Hotel California was voted the song with the greatest guitar solo by Rolling Stone magazine. Well, when you hire two of the fa best studio musicians to play your guitar solos, you're going to get that. And if Rolling Stone says that it's the greatest guitar solo of all time. The Guitar Center of magazines. You know for a fact that it is not. They, that is the biggest trash publication I enjoy, ever. I enjoy the, the uh, I enjoy, you know, when I'm driving air guitar to the whole Hotel California solo. Great, great song, great solo. Uh, greatest of all time. To me, one of the, no. one of the most overrated bands ever. I, I don't I don't get it and I don't, uh, I don't I'm, care. I'm to. gonna say that they're they're overrated. I don't think one of the most overrated. I enjoy the Eagles. Uh, I definitely can get into it, but I think that the hype behind them is a, a lot more than it should be. I All think right, maybe that's it. They're a good rock band, not yeah. a great rock band. Uh, I think their greatest hits album is like fourth best selling album of all time. Got a lot of great tunes on it, but greatest of all time, uh, I, I don't think that they deserve to be up there. I think they were the first band to charge over a hundred dollars for a ticket. Back in, when the Hell Freezes Over tour That's, happened. Yeah, no, not I definitely o slightly overrated. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go ridiculous with the Eagles and say that they were yeah. grossly overrated, but they're definitely overrated. Where do we stand on Tom Petty? Tom Petty, I think he's right where he should be. Great, great rock and roll. <laughs> that sounded horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think he's right where he should be. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> No, I, I, I think uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. I think Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers better than Tom Petty solo. All right. I think, okay. he, I think he started getting a little more poppy with his solo stuff. I, I, I like the, the Heartbreakers. You're welcome. I think the Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers stuff, underrated. Tom Petty solo, overrated as a whole, I think, right about where he should be. Yeah. All right. I'll give you that. Definitely great songwriter. Yeah, you know he, he, yeah, he was good. He, he, right. I, he you know, he toured with uh, with Johnny Depp, which kind of knocks him down a few steps because I think he's an epic douchebag. But <laughs> we'll get into epic douchebags later. But right. I, I I don't even think we need to do an epic douchebag show. I think they. I'm he, already here. I, I we we we're here. I think the biggest epic douchebag. I think we can agree is Gene Simmons, and then just move on. Yes. Yes. No doubt. Oh yeah. All right, Bob Krause, the Who, overrated guitar, awesome bass and drums. The Who, that's another one of those bands. Uh, this is a lot of, I mean, respect them for what they did. Yep. Not going to ever take that away. I didn't love them as much as the rest of the world did. I would agree with that. I think that they are slightly overrated. Uh, John Entwistle was a bass player. Fantastic. Th Thunderfingers, probably one of the best bass players. Very under, probably the most underrated bass player. Yeah. I, not the best bass player, but the most underrated. That guy was absolutely phenomenal playing yep. and He played with his fingers. Great bass player. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the band, you know, you got Pete Townsend diddling little kids, and oh, I was doing research. Yeah, okay, hey, why don't you have a seat right over here? Yeah, he's he's yeah, he hired Dave Ellison to uh to to fucking play bass yeah. for him. <laughs> the uh they, they they had tons of great stuff. I mean, I, let's you go through the catalog. I mean, come on, they they were a great band, but they're one of those ones that yeah I, I can take a leave them. Yep, you know, I agree. I. I Good band, not know. great. I think slightly overrated. Plus, I listen to the radio a lot, and a lot of it's saturating my fucking eardrums, and, and I get so sick so quickly of so many things. And that's just me, folks. Uh, Deep Purple. The, the most overrated song, one of the most overrated songs that you can't play in any guitar center. Smoke on the Water. And, and, and first thing that first song you learn how to play on guitar. Yep. First song I learned how to. First riff I learned how to play. That on and guitar. Crazy Train. First riff ever. Thanks, uh, Vinny. Smoke on the water. Uh, Deep Purple. Uh, no, it was just I. Uh, Give me a Highway Star and let's yeah, call it a day. Uh, highway Star. Smoke on the water is not a bad song. It's just over, oh, I love just that song. ridiculously overplayed. I think the band again, much like the Who, I think slightly overrated. I think people give them more credit than they deserve. But they're not a bad band. I'm no. not. I'm not saying that they suck. But I think people elevate them a little bit. Highway Stock, great fucking tune. Who is the bass player? Ian pa Page. No idea. Page I, could, I couldn't name a single guy in the band. Fucking phenomenal bass lines in, the, in Deep Purple music. Yep. Uh, and uh, by, by the way, the uh, the best thing that the the Who ever did was letting CSI take uh, Bubba O'Reilly as their theme song. That's probably the best thing that the Who's ever done. All right. There you go. That was a, that's a scream and a half. There you go. Boom. And, and m m most people think that that song is named Who Are You? No, they think it's called Teenage Wasteland. Teenage Wasteland. 
Isn't it Bubba O'Reilly? Bubba O'Reilly. Bubba O'Reilly is the name of the song, absolutely. Yep. Never quite understood why it had that name. Never really cared to know. I just read a story about that a week ago, and it's uh, been lost to the filter of my stupid brain because Noah McDonald died this week, and I'm very sad about that. That's why I'm not in uh, the best mood today. Yeah, I was going to say, John, one of, if you watched our stand-up comedians, went, hey, Noah McDonald, hey, the guy with the most annoying voice in the world. And he's dead, so. Hey, Norm, why aren't you here today? Because I died, you see. Because <laughs> I'm Cause, dead. Because I'm dead. Yeah, Norm McDonald, uh, great stand-up comedian, terrible delivery, but yes. Best delivery of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen Better. Wright. Stephen Wright. I agree. All right. That was underrated. Is that overrated? Oh, that, that, this, is, this is underrated. Joe Bonamassa. Good, great guitar player. Underrated. Real, totally. Really good guitar player. Most people don't even know who he is. Uh, I, I actually subscribe to his YouTube channel. I watch his stuff all the time. I think he is an absolutely fantastic guitar player. Yeah. Very underrated. No doubt about it. He's got the goods, as they say. Yes. Yes. He's got the discs. No doubt. Um, all right. Now, Kiss started the downfall of popular music. And the band that picked up where they left off that made music absolutely trash. And killed an entire genre of music. Give it to me. Nirvana. Oh, all right. I got to go outside, walk around, and uh, talk to the birds, be one with nature before we discuss this fucking trash bullshit. I didn't get it at the time. I was kind of pissed off, too, because they killed the era of music that I loved. They killed me. The Kiss made it trash, and then Nirvana completely fucking killed it. Yeah. And if, you, and if you have to go water the lawn, go water the lawn and come back. <laughs> but they, I, I'm gonna, I'll, give you, I'll give you 30 seconds on Nirvana. I was excited for some change, you know, cult cultural change, yep. uh, you know, uh, give me spare change, whatever. Real, real quick, I think you're in trouble when you get home. Why? Because Renata said the Who's her best band. I know that. Okay. <laughs> love rain over me. I'm going to rain love over the plants. There you go. But give me your Nirvana sh shtick and then... I... I, I Talented musicians, no, yes. No. Well, no. Dave Grohl's fantastic, uh, and and I don't I don't consider him to be a real member of Nirvana. Uh, but because the best thing to happen to Dave Grohl's career was was uh, fuckface doing himself in was, was was a Remington shotgun. Yes, and sorry, I, I, they called him the John Lennon of of the new oh, generation, and I'm like, well, these kids need to wake up because John Lennon beat his wives and all that other stuff. I'm not going to shit on John Lennon. I love John Lennon. John Lennon's right where he should be too. But um, I'm, what I'm saying is. You don't go stepping inside to comparing somebody to John Lennon, yeah, no. who's when they're. I, I I didn't get Nirvana. I, I fucking was not interested. I didn't. Uh, maybe I'm too lazy to shut the radio off. I know a lot of their music. I, I but that whole that Pearl Jam and the Nirvana and the Soundgarden and the what I wasn't ready for for this kind of change. It was not for me. It wasn't geared towards me. Nope. And it, it it opened up a whole door of... There was so much what they called alternative music around in the 80s that was fantastic, great music. They opened the floodgates for the new alternative music. You know, you get the bands like the Pixies that were highly underrated, except for, from their fan base. And now they're a lot... In the Lemonheads and Evan Dando and... and, and all, all these bands that were great already. And now it's like okay to listen to alternative music. And it's like back then they think oh, you're a wimp or a pussy if you listen to alternative music. Now it's the thing. Fuck Nirvana. I, 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 uh, I'm sorry. I'm getting emotional. No, because I agree with you 100%. I think Fuck that they absolutely destroyed an entire genre of music. Yeah. And, everyone's like, and you said they're talented musicians. Dave Grohl, Foo Fighters, love the Foo Fighters. Can't stand fucking Nirvana. Fucking hate it. It was reheated, watered-down Ramones. And when you fucking watered down three-chord cheese... By the way, Ramones, incredibly underrated. Don't fix it. Uh, don't, don't, if it ain't if broke, broke, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. Ramones, yep. love the fucking Ramones. Oh. Nirvana was watered down. Go ahead. Hey, he's stepping on the fucking pop. Nirvana was watered-down rehashed Ramones. I love the Ramones. It's not a slam on the Ramones. 
three chord cheese whiny fucking lyrics absolutely positively 100 percent couldn't dislike a band more than i disliked nirvana not a fan not even a little bit i think they actually have that, that song territorial pissings which was more of a of a punk almost like a it was kind of almost like a thrashy song that song i liked pretty much everything else that they did i think is just fucking hot garbage not a fan didn't like kurt cobain singing couldn't play guitar to save his fucking life uh chris novoselic playing bass just kind of doot 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 in the background not a fan of the band not a fan of their music love dave Grohl with the foo fighters absolutely think he's a phenomenal musician didn't like anything at all about nirvana and nobody can change my mind i think that they were hot trash and they completely destroyed the music scene that was because and that's not necessarily a bad thing because they destroyed hair metal which was just getting so over processed and i think that's what made nirvana as popular as they were because they seemed to be more on the level of the kids who were just learning to play their instruments and anyone that picked up a guitar for the first time could just jump in and play Nirvana songs because they were that easy to play. And there was nothing dramatic about them. There was nothing uh, special about it. It was rehashed, shitty Ramones. No it, question about it. I, yeah, I, I, I don't get the... Uh, I, I just... Oh, man. I, I can't... I, 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 and, and, see, and see, when we're crapping on... on uh, on grunge music and that whole Seattle sound, Ugh. Pearl Jam, hated them too, didn't like them. I liked them more than any of the others. I disliked them less than I disliked Nirvana. How's that? They, that's a good, that's good. They, and they opened the door for more shit music to come, like yep. fucking Linkin Park and, yep. and uh, even Limp Biscuit and, and that Ugh. rap rock shit. Ugh. That new metal. New that's metal. what they call yep. it. Yep, Limp Biscuit, garbage. Although that song, Break Stuff, I love that song. Yeah, well, it's, it's just it, angry. For, it, that's a guilty to pleasure. To be angry. Yeah, Talk, guilty pleasures are good. Talking about taking a chainsaw to somebody, I'm in. Chainsaws? Speaking of chainsaws and uh, guilty pleasures and macho angst, you're going to hate me for this one. And who's the band that opened the door for a band like Nirvana to just walk right through? Motherfucking Pantera. Oh, the shit. Oh, <laughs> groovy rock metal shit. Cowboys from Hell, when I first saw that, I said, something bad is coming. This is not going to be good because now D Dimebag had on that song the worst fucking guitar tone I've ever heard on a, on a, on a released song back then. Yep. CC DeVille had better guitar tone. And then this fucking idiot comes out singing... Whatever the fuck he was actually trying to sing, for for once, and they were they, this groove and the blah with cowboys. For, oh, okay, all right, yeah. I, I never got the macho man angst, you know, the testosterone build up. Oh, I'm gonna be angry at you for no fucking reason. Ah. And then, a couple years later, what was the song? Five minutes alone, and he started that bullshit with the vocals. I despise that. I never got it. Fuck Pantera and Nirvana. Hold on one second. <laughs> oh, saved by Brendan. No, 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 no. I'm not done yet. No, you're not, uh, not saved right. by anybody. Oh, okay. I'll take it. I can't fucking believe you're my co-host. <laughs> I'm going to agree with one thing that you said. I was never a fan of Dimebag's tone. Stunk. It was always, you know, metal tone was always too vamp, and it was always that warm, thick tone. And he always had that analog, just weak, Tinny. I don't want to say thin, but just too not a big fat tone like you got from bands like Metallica and Megadeth and, and those type of bands and it was j just kind of it, it was his tone was definitely weak a Yamaha through a Gorilla amp it, oh yes I, I, that's that's you know slamming Gorilla amps and we both owned one so you know you should probably ease off on that I too. love Gorilla amps they were great everyone that was our first practice but, amp that had the built in distortion but not on a on a million dollar recording guy. no I, I loved Cowboys from Hell 
I loved uh, my my uh, my band Oxidize plays Multiple War. Great fucking song. Bill and Salmo, great. Uh, Cowboys from Hell, Far Beyond Driven, and Vulgar Display of Power. Three phenomenal albums. Loved all three. Anything that, so if, for those of you who don't know, Pantera was a hair metal band before Cowboys from Hell. And Phil and Selmo joined the album before, and it was called Power, Power metal, metal. Power yes. Metal. And it was garbage. James it was, Hetfield. Yep, it was absolute fucking garbage trash. And those three albums in the middle, I have three of my favorite albums that came out. And, and maybe I might be a little bit biased because that's kind of what turned the corner away from all the crappy grunge music and kind of started to come back. It was like the only band that was still putting out really good metal, in my opinion. Okay. But I... I, I so we're trying out new co-hosts, and I'm, uh, the only uh, <laughs> prerequisite is that you don't hate Pantera. And you don't, you, you don't come in and shit on Pantera in a New York Dolls t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Who am I? That, yeah, I, I think that we are worlds apart. I think that, right. by the way, as far as over underrated, I think they're rated right where they should be. I think D- uh, Dimebag Daryl, another one of those guys that become more popular after he died. I think he's a great guitar player. But people still think... respected him while he was alive. Let's give him that. But, but his popularity went way up oh, after yeah, he died. Yeah, definitely. That was and that was a fucking tragedy and a mm-hmm. shame. That was no a, doubt. A, just absolutely awful. Over over. Uh, oh, you broke up my favorite band, so I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, oh, fucking lunatic. Br- uh. Brendan n- nailing it on the head as Brendan always does. Anthrax. An- Anthrax started that rap metal stuff with "I'm the Man," and I hate it. I loved Anthrax. Don't know how they're part of the big four. I, I think that saw they them on that tour that. with Celtic Frost. They were great, but I, uh, they were the ones that that really brought that rap metal into, mm-hmm. and everybody wanted to do it because you don't have to be talented to fucking sing Mother Goose rhymes over a riff. So, it doesn't take a lot of a uh, lot of thought to to and process everyone, that. Everyone goes back to the yep. Yeah, see, but there was a big stretch of time between I'm the Man and uh, I did it all for the Nookie. You know. Ooh, that was but a I, think good... it, I think it just took a long time to catch on. There were a lot of bands that were trying, trying to, do, to it, do it, yeah. But none of them, the one that made it popular, Anthrax started it. Yep. And actually, let's even back up a little bit more. Aerosmith you know walked, walked this way. walked this way actually started it. Genius. That was what started it, but that was really like one blip on the radar, and it never came back up again until Anthrax, and that was another blip on the radar. But it was one of those things where it started gaining momentum after. You know, Aerosmith did it, and, you, and that was, what, 84, 85? 86. 86. Yep. The same year Master of Puppets come out. Right. So that's what I think. That Sampled was the, on I'm the Man. Yep, that was the first time I think that you saw it. And then the next time that you saw it was Anthrax. And Anthrax, I think at the time, not saying Anthrax is a more popular band than Aerosmith, but at the time Aerosmith did Walk This Way, they tried to reinvent themselves because they were pretty much gone at that point. Yeah. And they were trying to bring themselves back in, so it was like the gimmick. It was like painting your face and having a... Uh, you know pyrotechnics on the on the stage show to get people to watch you, and I think they yes. did that to say, "Hey, look at us." And then I think Anthrax kind of did the same thing because yeah. they were one of those bands that were, you know, kind of just barely treading water at the time, mm-hmm. and they did that. And Among everyone them. went, "Wow, that's really cool." Yeah, definitely. And the the, the um, I'm the man <coughs> had the Run DMC sample in it. Yep. For, uh, a master of Puppets sample in it. The uh, I'm so bad I should be in detention. That was a that was fun. It was I enjoyed it, and because they were um, you get you get to talk about rap metal now. I get to go water the laundry. Oh, all right. Water the lawn. My turn. All right. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get angry here. There you go. You can go talk bad about Pantera while I'm gone. All right. Pantera, Pantera, Pantera. All right. What do we got here? Anthrax did it. see. I, Brendan, you're right on the money. I was just going to talk about Anthrax had the, uh, well, they did the uh, Bring the Noise. And they they were, I want to say, because uh, they were on Island Records, I think. I think they were label mates with Public Enemy. So they had, they had, a, they were, they were, uh, they were all good, good friends and good pals. They respected each other and, and Public Enemy, Chuck D and Flava loved anthrax and vice versa and they they got along famously and they said hey why don't we why don't we do this and that was uh i think right after during when joey belladonna was singing for anthrax and then they 
let him go and, and got uh, John, what's his face? Correct me here. Uh, John Bush. Yes. They had the, uh, if only, I think was their first single with John Bush. Remember that, Anthrax? Yep, John yep. Bush. John Bush. Only, yep. Arvidsson. Great fucking song. Arvidsson. Breaking stuff. That was a, yeah. He's squeezing back in here. So we were, we were talking the, the relationship between Chuck D, Public Enemy, and Anthrax. They, yes. were, they were either label mates or just good friends in New York City. And they uh, come together and, and did, a, did a thing. And when Scott Ian first asked them to cover that song, they said no. They refused. They said, nope, we don't want you to do it. And Anthrax went and wrote the song and put it together anyways. And they were both on the same album, uh, the same label. record label at the Island. time. Island. Island Records. And Scott Ian, after they recorded it, put it in and they said yeah actually we can we can work with this because i think that i don't i don't think that they quite got what they were going to do and then that's when chuck d and and uh um, flav flav of flav with the giant clock clock they said hey we like it but we want to be part of it and then they jumped in and that's great move they did the collaboration yep great move shitty and song i just watched yeah to me it's kind of besides the besides the artist that did it the song's forgettable you know yeah uh, I couldn't give you a line from it besides bring the noise. Um, I just saw a video the other day of Anthrax doing Cotton and Mosh live, like from two weeks ago. Yep. They still have it. They're, oh, yeah. they're fucking great. Great, great, great live band. band. Seen them live four or five times. Really? Yes. Nice. Really good. Never saw him with John Bush, but I did see I him. I didn't either. I, I've seen him with Joey Ballerina. I mean, Belladonna. <laughs> and the I'll Indian? Say, I will say this. The first two times that I saw them was before Joey Belladonna left and was yes. replaced by John Bush. Yeah. Eh. I saw him at the Orpheum. And then, the... uh, then I've seen them twice since. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was that leaving the band and coming back rejuvenated him, but much better his second time around with Anthrax mm -hmm. than his first time around Great. with Anthrax. Hey, good. Good for him. What do we got? What? Uh -huh. Uh, the cranberries. She. Uh, Dolores so right, uh, Ridden. Great vocalist. But. I couldn't tell you any other song other than that song, Zombies, and it makes me want to become a zombie and have someone shoot me in the head. One of my uh, fa uh, friend of the family, dear friend, she she died in uh, 2013. Was She followed the cranberries around the country and, and fucking sorry, loved them. Sorry to hear that. F on both counts. <laughs> yes. And. Uh, so I, whenever I hear the hear the cranberries, I think of her and go. She would come in here and 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 knock everything off the table if we said that they were overrated <laughs> and so, kick me right in the balls over, and the taint over, and the anus hole. Overrated. And All by right. the way, now let, let's. It, it made me think of one that I had talked to you and I said I was going to mention. Speaking of following a band around the country, the Grateful Dead. <laughs> overrated, garbage, terrible. Ugh. I was working for Boston Communications Group when uh, Jerry Garcia died. 95. And no lie, three people, when it was announced, started crying in work and had to go home. And I said... And they got in their 1969 Volkswagen, Volkswagen bus, bus and drove grabbed in, some ice cream. Did a, did a hit of acid, yeah. smoked the blunt, and went home. By the way, you, you hear about the stories about people following them around, and what's the one thing that you always hear? They were always fucked up on every type of psychedelic drug, and that explains why people like the music, because you would have to be fucked up to That's, enjoy that. I got to tell you, I love Truckin'. Good song. Personal reasons. Suckin'. <laughs> I thought it was, that, I, wasn't, that wasn't... It wasn't who doesn't suckin'? love a good FBI raid in it, your song? It, it, it wasn't, um, wasn't suckin'. I thought that was what it was, because... It was describing their careers. Yes, suckin'. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this. Back in the 70s when disco had become the thing to do and everybody, you got to be a disco, you got to be a disco, you got to have a disco I song. Was made Man. for loving you, baby. baby. Hey, I know a band that did fucking a disco <laughs> album. Another reason to hate them. <laughs> Not that I need another one. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> that was Gene's bass line. You ripped it off for the yeah, theme from, music to this show. From everything. Ah. Uh, my favorite Grateful Dead song, which is a sentence you don't often hear me say, 
is Shakedown Street. It's a fucking, it's a funky disco song. Don't know it. It's good. And that's all I got to say about the Grateful Dead. I don't care. I don't, I don't, I don't have an opinion. I won't, I won't stand up and defend them, and I won't uh, shit on them. I just go overrated. How did they ever become totally what they were? O- drugs? Yeah, drugs. Drugs yeah. and uh, culture. It, that, that tells you right now, kids. If you if you want to teach kids not to do drugs, make them sit and listen to two hours of the Grateful Dead with some dirty, smelly hippies in yeah. a in an enclosed it's van. Someone that hasn't showered in three weeks. Me? <laughs> oh. Terrible. I, Terrible. Thought, I thought you meant I haven't yeah, shouted. Uh, uh, is that why you're sitting? It, it looks like you combed your hair with a greasy pork chop this it was, morning. It's Sears Portrait Day, folks. <laughs> Glamour shots. I'm sitting in my sweater. I'm sitting in my third floor guitars. Third floor guitars. Malden. Oh, Malden Mass. Bring your guitar. Tom. My, my phone shit the bed, so I can't read comments. Oh. I, I'm leaving it up to you, sir. All right. It's all up to me. All right. Driving the bus. Captain right. of the ship. Hmm. I get to bail out. What, what, he has to go down with it. What, what else? Uh, what else we got here? Who do? Uh, you two. Oh, terrible. All right. Garbage. I like some of this stuff. No. Oh, very overrated band. Every member of that band overrated. Every time you get fucking U2 gets up on stage, they they got to sp- spew some political bullshit. Kind of like another band that I absolutely fucking despise, Bruce Springsteen. Terribly overrated. <sighs> God awful. Hot fucking trash. Yes. <gasps> Yeah, Bruce Springsteen, terrible. I love Bruce Springsteen. Terrible. Terrible, awful, nothing nothing to write home about. Speaking Don't of like writing, it. he's a great writer. I, he's, no, he, I, he's a great lyricist. Garbage. He, he took the book of Bob Dylan and took it a step further. Or a step back. One step forward, two steps back? Is that how it goes? 57 channels and fucking Bruce is on? Whatever it was fucking... 41 Whatever shots. it was, it was he terrible. There's a lot of numbers in his songs. Whatever it was, it was terrible. It sucked. Not a fan. Love... Not a, not even a little bit. Didn't like it. And, and you know what I think one of the most ironic things about him is whenever anybody is doing like a, a, a political, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to show, you know, uh, love for their country and they play Born in the USA. My favorite. And it's like, listen to the song because it's an anti-USA That's song. That's what so I'm So it saying. is 100% but everybody puts it up there and they I put their it. American flag and they I, show the troops and it's like, actually listen to the song because it's, it's saying how shitty of a country we live in. Yeah, it's exactly right. And I fucking love Great point. I love when they do that. When Ronald Reagan did it, and it was a huge misstep in yeah, his career. Yeah, because it's like, uh, actually listen to the lyrics, the lyrics because it's an anti-USA song. They're telling the guy, sorry, pal, we don't have any jobs for you today. Yeah. We're telling the guy going down to the fucking VA, sorry, we don't have any openings. We have no benefits. For you. We, we got nothing. We won't get into politics, but I love you. That's a great point. I love when people use it as a great thing. And if you read comments on 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 Facebook, people that don't get it, they, they listen to go, How could you use such a terrible song? It's it's anti American. It's like Yeah, it's anti establishment America. It's yeah. not anti American. The sentiment is why don't you fucking help these fucks? And uh, and we always said we won't get political, I'm gonna I'm gonna start it and end it with this. You can love your country and hate your government. Always, and that's the way it fucking goes, yep. folks. No doubt about it. <laughs> and you right. don't always oh. have to agree on Pantera. All right, here we go. Uh, Skid Row. Oh, let's talk about Skid Row. And I'm going to say this with Skid Row. Uh, their first album, overrated, garbage. Pop- Mo- most of it, Not a garbage. Poppy. Their second album, absolutely fucking loved it. They were one of those bands when they first came out. And by the way, going to go back to Pantera. I went to see Pantera, and it was Pantera and Skid Row. And I went to see them, and Skid Row actually pulled off a great live show. Sebastian Bach, who I say all the time, if I was putting a band together and I could pick any singer that I wanted, Sebastian Bach would be the guy that I would put. That guy has got fucking pipes. He's great a du- choice. He's, he's a douchebag, but he's got pipes. <laughs> he loves Ace Frehley. Yeah. <sighs> this is Sebastian Bach. But, um... Nettle. Didn't really... Now, the song I Remember You... Off the first album, loved it. Good great, song. Great, great fucking tune. Uh, Love Letters in the Sand. Yeah, most of the other stuff on that album was just your typical hair metal, cheesy pop. But that really wasn't the band that they were. So their second album, they went heavier, Slave to the Grind. It was dirtier. It was it was grittier. 
it was more metal. It was louder. And they lost a lot of their fans because of it, but they gained Too one bad. Because I love the second album. The second album, dramatically underrated. The first album, overrated. Sebastian Bach is a singer, underrated. Uh, the rest of the band, I'm going to give them a little bit of an underrated because I think they were pretty decent musicians. After I listened to the first album, I would say that the entire band, everybody with the exception of Sebastian, would have been overrated. Mm -hmm. But after listening to the second album where they got to do more of what they wanted to do and the record company basically said, you guys can't fuck this up and let them do what they wanted to do, second album I think is a very underrated album. They nailed it. They yep. absolutely yep. fucking second nailed album, it. Awesome. I love that album. And That's one of those ones I don't listen to it all the time. Because I want it to be just as good as when I first heard it. Yep. Those opening chords of Monkey Business, I, I I can't remember if the video came out before I heard the record or, or, or whatever. But you get the, the you know that nice little little bluesy twang riff kind of thing, and when it kicks in, it was louder than anything at the time. Yep. And it was and the the fucking scream and the you and can't just, go wrong was, with Slave to the Ground. And it was just gritty. Yep. Yep, great fucking album. Loved it. Um, Brendan, what are you saying? Uh, the Guess Who, American Woman. Great tune. Uh, other than that, I don't know much about the band, but that's a great tune. These and, eyes. And, and the, uh, Le the Lenny's Crab's Itch version of it, I didn't think did it justice. One of those songs. Lenny's Crab's Itch. Len Lenny's Crab's Itch. Ah! I, don't, I, don't, I think that that was a song that probably shouldn't have been covered. I think he did it too much like the original. I don't think he added enough to it. I and think if, that song fucking and, st Stinks by Lenny. Uh, by yeah. Lenny's Crab's Itch. He should have. Is that is Crab's Itch? Is that why he cut the dreads yeah, off? I, say, I think that's. I think it's because Lisa Bonet uh, divorced him because he wouldn't shower ever, ever. Are you gonna go my way? It was a fantastic fucking song. Great tune. Uh, Love Lenny Kravitz. Uh, I hated that, that American Woman. Yep. It was. It was. It was too much. Basically, <sighs> it was almost like he was trying to recreate the song. He didn't do enough to it. No. Uh, it was a popular song when he did it because the song itself was popular, mm -hmm. but. It was too much like the original. And I think, by the way, I think our next episode, we're going to do cover tunes. Ooh! Cover tunes. What are we covering? What, what, what do you want to cover? We'll play a fucking song next week. All right. All right, we'll play a song. You want to play a song next week? Yeah. You, you're going to commit to it right now on air. So if you're going to say you want to do a song next week, we got to... Tiptoe through the tulips. Ah, tiptoe through the tulips. He's right where he should be. Yes, he is. Yep, no doubt about it. Uh, but, but um, yeah, so uh, American Woman. Great tune. But I don't know much about the guess who other than that. Uh, uh, great tune though. These eyes, great song. Um, there's another one from the from the late sixties or something. <laughs> Shit. Couldn't be that ah, good if you can't remember. Ah, but so we, we, when we, I hear it, I go, "Oh, I love this song!" And I forgot that it was the guess who because it was him when he was a little bit younger. So we we got our, our show for next week. Cover tunes. Boom. Cover tunes. Yes. No. You know, was it better? Was it worse? Should have never been covered. Is we, it going to be all over the place like this episode is? Probably, yes. Yeah. But I, I, there's enough there's enough cover tunes out there that we can we can definitely I think we can definitely put a show together of all cover tunes for next week. We can week. cover covers. We can cover covers. Yeah. We can even cover a cover while we're covering covers. I got you covered. I got, you can cover that. Put up your covers and uh, shut the door and cover me, Bruce Springsteen. Terrible. All right. All right. Uh, Evanescence. I love Amy Lee's voice. Uh, I love her voice. Yeah. I don't really care for the band themselves, but I love her voice. I think that album, what was it called? Uh, Entity or Escape or uh, uh, Enema, whatever it was called. I uh, Fall from Grief? Ooh. What the fuck? That was a great album. I, I loved it. I lo Spe speaking of Enemas, yes. Tool. Garbage. <laughs> Fucking hate Tool. Tool can go... With Romstein and uh, the two guys with the helmets and fucking go mow my lawn. I I, I don't I don't do not Tool. A, not a fan of Tool. Didn't at like all. them. All nine minute boring songs that you can take a nap in and come come back up and the song's still fucking playing. Yeah. Not a fan of nope. Tool. And they're one of those bands that I think they are very overrated. Very overrated. Maybe great musicians. Maybe. I just think I know the drummer is a, is a phenomenal drummer. I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but. The drummer for Tool, great drummer, but I think just the band itself. I think who's it's the thing? Is it Maynard James Ma Keenan? Ma Maynard Keenan, yep. Cougar Mellencamp, John Lee Kuna Oswald, yeah. John Cougar Mellencamp, overrated. Yeah, but John Cougar, overrated. Oh, Jack and Diane, garbage. Cherry Two Bomb. American kids growing no, up in, in Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible songs. Not a fan. I like John. Cougar. Pink houses, garbage. But that's for you and me. Not a fan. How dare you? We're just, we're just running through shitty bands now. He never wanted to be no like. pop singer. Yeah. He never wanted to write no pop songs. Duh. 
I mean, he couldn't even get his fucking name right. He was John Cougar, then he was John Cougar Mellencamp, then the, he was the, John Mellencamp. The record Mellencamp. company made him be Johnny Cougar when he first got signed, I think in 78. And then it was John Cougar, and then he's like, hey, fuck you guys. I want to use my real name. I'm going to use my real name. And they were like, ah, that's not going to work. And he's like, what if I put a headstone with my family's name on it in my next video? And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, all right, that's fine. That's heritage and all that bullshit because Springsteen's popular and, uh, you know, it's uh, America and... Not a fan. Not a fan. Not even a little bit. That hurts so good. <laughs> Folks, Michael, Michael Jackson. Fucking love Michael Jackson. I think he's rated where he should be. I don't yep. think he's over or under. I think he was a... Uh, One of the most talented motherfucking musician, people, artists, entertainers to ever walk the fucking earth. Backwards. Abs- yep. No doubt about it. Michael Jackson. Definitely. Jackson 5. Great stuff. Love, great, great, I, great music. I, he His voice... Gives me chills thinking that I know they lied. They were like, "Oh, he's nine years old." I'm, he I'm was sh- actually tw- eleven or twelve. I'm, I'm sure it gave Macaulay Culkin chills for another reason. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and Corey Feldman and all the other. Know, the other and, yeah, uh, it, exactly. Yeah. yeah, terrible human being. Great musician. Uh, yeah, uh, awful uh, 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 Airbnb host. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody <laughs> wants to go to the Neverland Ranch. <laughs> Beds and babies. Yeah. Yeah, I, Chris Hansen probably wanted to hang out there, but that's about it. Hey, would you like to have a seat? Yeah, have a seat right On the there, giraffe yeah. chair? On the giraffe chair. <laughs> and bring in Bobo the, uh, the, uh, the, the chimpanzee. Yes. There was a documentary about that and the kids that accused him and whatever, and I, won't, I, I don't want to watch it because I, don't, I think I don't want to know. All right. You know what I'm saying? Brendan's got a good one for us. Brendan always has a good one Brendan's for us. Brendan's always got good ones, and I think that this is probably one of those bands that leaves you scratching your head and can't understand how they have a single fan, and that is... ICP Insane Clown Posse. I'm out with the Insane Clown Posse. Fuck them. Just, just go to hell. Uh, Ab- absolute fucking. I won't even. Ra- I won't rate them. I'll just give my opinion. That's what I've been doing. Is yep. I'm not even rating these people. People I don't like. Not rating them. Over under. I know that's the title of the show. ICP N- doesn't deserve mention. Get the fuck out of here. We've already talked too much about them. But let, let, let's stick with that that kind of hip-hop genre music. Let's, let's talk about Eminem. I love Eminem. I don't go running out to buy his records, but I think he is fucking... I, I mean, I know he's a, he's, a, he's a 10 million seller, so he obviously isn't underrated. But if you, if you, if you pass on him and go, ah, he's just a, a fad or a flash in the pan... He is so fucking talented. I and think I think that I can take him or leave him. I'm not a fan of 95% of his music, but I can't say that the guy's not a talented lyricist sometimes. If I if will, you listen to some of the lyrics that he writes, it's garbage. But right. he does have a lot of really creative stuff and I actually watched the movie 8 Mile and enjoyed it. He was fantastic in that, and that was a re- that was a really good movie. But uh, I, if if I woke up one day and Lemmy gave me the talent that Eminem has, I'd be like, "Man, fuck yeah, I'll take it." What about what about the King of Rock? Run DMC. They call me Messiah. S- Underrated. Sucker. I. <clears throat> we were, I was going to talk about this with the anthrax thing, but yep. you opened the door, and it was a secret between me and our viewers here. I fucking love Run DMC. Definitely. I loved I, them from the fucking start. I enjoyed Run DMC, no doubt about it. They were. I actually wore a pair of Adidas with no shoelaces in them. I still, I still do. Yeah. Right now, I got the chucks on, but yeah. I yeah. was always a big fan of them. Uh, love Jam, Jam Master J put great beats together yep one of those bands that e- even being the metalhead that I was I still listened to them I still enjoyed them I didn't let anyone else know because it wasn't cool for a metalhead to listen to back then but loved them I still listened to it I still enjoyed it it was one of the few rap artists that I could actually enjoy and Eddie Martinez put the, the guitar licks on there and and, and man nah, nah, their nah, first nah. three albums I, lo- I fucking love Run DMC like, I, I can't stress it enough I think they're great Always were, always will be, with minus one member, obviously. Uh, damn, they, they were just... And you know what I love? When we talked about this a little bit, 
Aerosmith and Run DMC, and they're like, ooh, it opened a door because now white people had heard rap. It's like, I've been listening to Run DMC for three years before this came out. Yep, love Run DMC. I already had the records, you I, know? I was never an NWA guy. Never, nah. never really cared for them. I thought that was. I didn't like the way that was it, going. It, it was kind of. It, it was almost like, like, uh, like the the shock metal, kind of like Kiss. You know, didn't really have a lot of talent behind it. Like but, how you know, I felt had... about Pantera, the Macho. You don't need to be that. Ma- There's no reason to walk into a bar and start a fight with somebody. You, you, if, if you're reactive, yep. Then you get physical. Yeah. If somebody make makes a makes a move on you, yeah. I just want five minutes alone with this guy. But you don't have to do that. Nope. That's what NWA was to me. I was and, like, and stop. I would agree. It was just way too game. over the top. And wasn't, yep. Just wasn't a fan. A lot of it looked manufactured to yes. me. Uh, all right. Another one that we talked about. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Red Hot Steaming Pile of, of I Thought I Liked Them because a lot of bands that I loved and respected liked them. And I said, I can't wait to hear these guys because a lot of these guys wore their T-shirts and, and praised them. Yep. And uh, Metallica. Metallica was a big fan. Big yeah. fans of them. All right. And I heard uh, a song called Knock Me Down. I loved it. Yep. Thought it was good. Great tune. I re-listened to it the other day. Doesn't hold up. No. Sorry. Nope, doesn't. I agree. The cover of Higher Ground by Stevie Wonder. Best thing they ever did. I would say top 20 all-time best covers. Yes. <clears throat> Higher Ground. Phenomenal cover. Great fucking great song. The album Mother's Milk. I enjoyed everything that they did after Mother's Milk. Just fucking garbage. Yeah. And the worst concert I ever saw was Red Hot Chili Peppers, and we'll talk about the, the this guy as well, White slash Rob Zombie, whether he was white or he was Rob. Worst concert I ever saw. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Just it. it I went to see I, I, Red Hot Chili Peppers. It was kind of on the on the downside because I really enjoyed Mother's Milk. I enjoyed that album. Mm-hmm. But they were whatever the album was, Californication, whatever the fucking album was that they put out after it. Fucking hated that album, but because I like Mother's Milk, I'm like, oh, they're playing with Rob Zombie, I'll go see it. Mm-hmm. Or oh, it was White Zombie, I can't remember if it was White or Rob Zombie, but it's pretty much the same fucking band. He just got cocky and said, oh, we're not White anymore, we're Rob. <laughs> hey, hey, Mass is Rob Zombie, by the way. Grew up right <coughs> down the street here. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, and just... He's not bragging. I love Rob Zombie. I love White Zombie. Uh, live, he was fucking garbage. I'll, I'll, Absolutely, I'll everything about that show was trash. They went on first, and I was disappointed. And then the Red Hot Chili Peppers went on. I didn't think somebody could have been worse than what uh, Rob Zombie was live. And oh. the Red Hot Chili Peppers were fucking terrible. That sounds to me like a fucking nightmare. It was fucking awful, and not Red the Hot- kind Rob Zombie was trying nope. to convey to you. It sounds like yes, oral so fucking Red Hot Chili Peppers dramatically overrated. Mm. Garbage. Not a fan. Not even a little that bit. That fucking stinks. Rob out Zombie, loud. White Zombie, stripper music. I like it. Yeah, yeah. When you it's, put it together in the studio yeah, and, and you, it's groovy, you don't have to worry about doing it live. Groovy stripper music. I like. Yeah. I like Rob Zombie. I will say that. They, but I think they're rated about where they should be. You know, they, they they got a decent fan base. People don't rant and rave and say they're the greatest band of all time. Who and doesn't I think love that, a Thunder Kiss? There you go. Yeah, absolutely. I like a Dragula. Yeah, that's we good. Got, well, yeah, no, we can definitely. I can get into to Zombie. Uh, Brendan Bean, uh, back to metal, Slayer. Uh, I might have to shut the camera off again and punch John a few more times if he says bad stuff about Slayer. But no, uh, no, Nothing bad to say about Slayer. They're, they're another one of those bands. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Diabolos and Musica was a terrible album by them, but I think pretty much everything else that they've done has been spo- it's been Slayer. Mm-hmm. It's been spot on. Love it. Uh, anyone that thinks Kerry King is a great guitar player is an idiot. And you're uh, wrong. He, he is a he is your stereotypical metal guitar player. Not a great guitar player. I enjoy his guitar playing, but I wouldn't consider him to be great or it fits above the, average. Because it fits their band. And exactly, evil music, angry music, but not evil angry for the purpose of being evil and angry. Great fucking tunes. Love fucking Slayer. One when of my you favorites. write a line called. Bastard sons begat your cunting Hunting daughters. daughters. I mean, come on, that's 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 yep. poetry right there. Yeah, no doubt about it. Ah, uh, mandatory suicide. Great fucking tune. Yeah. Yep. Great. Awesome. Well, awesome. Love Slayer. Love Slayer. Uh, Rod- Rodney Sapretti asking about the Beastie Boys. Uh, How c- you can't go okay. wrong with the Beastie but Boys. I, 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 they're another one of those bands that I'm gonna say early stuff. Respectable. Enjoyed it. Uh, they kind of went over the top and they lost me after at, I heard a cassette <coughs> whoo, excuse me after they Paul's, were Paul's boutique hot fucking trash not not fucking worth five seconds of my time License to Ill was kind of that 
it's kind of campy. Mm-hmm. It was almost like we all thought they were making fun of when we first heard it. They were almost making fun of rap, mm-hmm. um, which they really weren't. But that song we talk about, Bruce Springsteen was born in the USA, and everybody plays it as your American anthem, and it's an anti-American anthem. Yeah, everybody plays "Fight for Your Right to Party," and they were making fun of the frat boys. The, the macho the, energy yeah. and the, the, the boys club. And yeah. they were making fun of it, but everybody plays that all the time. And they're like, yeah, you got to fight for your right to party. And it's like, you do realize that he's making fun of people like you, right? Exactly. That song is a spoof. And uh, it had, uh, was it uh, Jeff Henneman played the fucking solo in that song? thought it was, it was Kerry King. King. One, of, one of the Slayer guys. Yeah. So it's kind of, we're going to blend the two together. The one that played the awful solos. Uh, that would be both of them at that time. Oh. So it, here's a little fact about uh, Slayer. They put out, First album was Show No Mercy. Second album was Hello Waits. Third album was Rain and Blood, which I think was their best album. Mm-hmm. After they put out Rain and Blood, the record company came to them and said, you're signed up for the next album, which was South of Heaven. And they said, we refuse to record the album with you unless you guys learn music theory. Because all of the solos that you guys play are all, all out of key, and they're all fucking terrible. Really? So we will not let you record this new album unless you sit down with a guitar teacher and learn how to play in key. No shit. And if you listen to all of the previous Slayer albums, all of their solos, regardless as to what key the song was in, the solos were all in the same key because in- they had that that melodic, evil-sounding... Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, they played that same key for every song that they played, regardless as to what the riff was, because they didn't know any better. Yep. But the record company, I believe it was Atlantic Records, went to them and said, we will not record this album unless you guys sit down with Guitar Teacher. No shit. Jeff Henneman did, and if you listen to Jeff Henneman on that album, amazing. Really? Especially compared to the older stuff. Mm -hmm. Jeff Henneman fucking nails it, and a spot on Kerry King still sloppy and shitty. Is that why they opened the record with, with the South of Heaven lick? You know, one... Do, no, 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 to, to show the record company. To show the record hey, company. We learned. Hey, we, we actually paid we attention. We paid attention. We went to school. That's a, yeah. So that, that's a little, uh, little something you didn't nice. know about Slayer. And that's but the, the record company said, we refuse to record this next album unless you learn music theory because you're way off and it sounds awful. And that's the and Rick Rubin it, it uh, connection with yep. Def, uh, the Beasties being on Def Jam and, and having Rick Rubin as the producer. Yep. And bringing Kerry King in to throw that awful... Whammy by shit over uh, Suicidal Tendencies. Great band. Great band. First couple albums didn't like. The first one, all I wanted was a Pepsi. Kind of a... Uh, uh, um, uh, what was the song there? All Mom uh, Wanted Was a Back Rub. Yeah. <laughs> um, I Saw Your Mommy and Your Mommy's Dead. Great fucking tune. I watched her as she bled. Great fucking tune. Uh, that was on their first album. I, it was too skater punkish. The first album. That's what. A great, uh, the, great description. The, the second album, Join the Army. Mm-hmm. I thought was that was kind of their crossover album where they started to get a little more thrashy, but it was still too skater punkish for me. I tried to. They didn't want me because I have asthma. <sighs> they told me to lie to the Meps physical doctor. There, there you go. It's a good, good fun thing that fact, happened. folks. I tried to join the army. They didn't. They didn't want me. I got kicked out for being fat, by the way. True story. But the third album, How Will I Laugh Tomorrow When I Can't Even Smile Today? Yes. Amazing album. Rocky George. Very Rocky George, underrated guitarist. How Will I Laugh Tomorrow? Very that. underrated album. Haven't the band as a whole, I think, are right where they should be. But mm-hmm. How Will I Laugh Tomorrow? Lights, Camera, Revolution. Uh, both really, really good albums. Uh, so some of the albums I think are underrated. As a band, as a whole, I think they're right about where they should be. Nice. I got nothing else to add. As Suicide. Good fucking stuff. Good band. No doubt about it. Good band. All right, what do we got? You got anything else? New York Dolls. One of my all-time favorite John, bands. John's wearing the shirt. I think that says enough about what I feel about them. I actually don't know enough about him to say anything bad, but because he said bad stuff about Pantera, uh, terrible tone. The singer just sounded like he was squealing. What else did you say about Pantera? Uh, I forget. Uh, but it was I'm a gonna, long time ago. Yeah, pretty much all the same stuff I'm going to say. I, I don't know enough about the New York Dolls, uh, other gr- than David gritty, Johansson was in the band. That's about all I know. Gritty, sloppy, dirty, dangerous, uh, unpredictable. Kind of like my first girlfriend. Yes! Uh, ahead of their time. They called Johnny Thunders uh, the godfather of punk guitar. Uh, 
Excuse me. And my favorite thing, this is a little thing, uh, my friend Rich, who turned me on to the dolls. At the time when Pantera came out, this was the, the, the connection uh, that, I, that I had. I was going, I was listening more to, you know, not so much, well, the popular hair bands, but going back like Hanoi Rocks and the Dolls and R.I.P. Razzle. L.A. Guns and yes. Is that you're supposed to say that? Yes, R.I.P. Razzle. Rocks. And uh, fuck you, Vince Neil. And um, the Dolls, uh, it was like, wow, man, I understand why they love it. But my friend Rich, who turned me on to the Dolls, Anytime he mentions the dolls or I mention the dolls to somebody, they go, who? And you go, all right, we got to tell the story. Okay. Uh, you know Buster Poindexter that hot, sings hot, 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 hot. hot? Well, a <laughs> long time ago, he was in a band called the New York Dolls. And yeah. So I always thought that was a little David Joe, Buster Point, Hanson, Dexter. Yes. Yes. All right. Brendan said Man of War. Or nope. T- or Testament. Man of War. You know what? Never, e- never even, got into them. Even if I wanted to listen to Man of War, I would have picked up the album cover and I, saw the guys with the hairy chest dressed in leather. And the overalls. And, and I just would have looked at it and would have been like, what is this, like uh, like Village People Part yeah, 2? Yeah, it was. No thanks. Never <laughs> listened to them because I couldn't get past the album covers. No. Nope. Testament, extremely underrated. Alex Skolnick, one of the best guitar players ever. Yep, Chuck uh, Billy. Yep, Chuck Billy, great vocalist. Ba-boom. Great fucking band. Love fucking Testament. One of my favorites. Man of War. You know they say like are uh, the the hair bands. They invested in cases of Aquanet. Yep. Man of War invested in cases of baby oil. <laughs> I just every time I fucking looked on, looked on the album cover, I just, nope. I couldn't get. I'm just looking at it. I'm like, they look like metalheads, but it looks like the Village People. Joey DeMeo. What was it? Joey DeMeo? I, I think I don't even know any of their uh, names. I never may, got that Maybe far. it was Mayo. <laughs> he slathered himself in Mayo like a Village person. Heavy metal village people. Yes, Somebody heavy, in a bo- in a boardroom came up with that. Yes. They went, "Hey, wait, why don't we have a heavy metal village people? That'll sell. That'll sell." And the guy shows up and he's like, "I'll do it. Put me in some leather overalls and slather me in mayo." Rush. I think Rush. I I, I got to say about Rush. I didn't care for them when I was a teenager. I love them more now, and 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 respect what they did. More now than I ever did. Incredibly overrated. Really? Great musicians, all three of them. Yeah. Phenomenal musicians. If you put out 40 albums, you're... Doing something right. You're going to get a couple songs right. Oh, yeah. And I think that that was pretty much um, Moving Pictures, good album. 2112. Uh, Nope, not a fan. Ah! I just talented musicians and you know we talked about Judas Priest you know the, the some of the parts being being greater than my whole than, than the than the individuals mm-hmm. I think Rush was the exact opposite I think you had three phenomenal musicians that just put out boring fucking music okay if you were a dork and you were in your mom's basement playing D&D Rush was probably your favorite band I'll give you that and just not a fan very talented musicians Getty Lee can't sing to save his life but aside from that three phenomenally talented musicians that play some fucking boring music. I laugh when I hear Fly By Night. It's almost like, all right, this is an audition, isn't it? This yeah. isn't he's not this, serious. This isn't real. He's not serious. Tom Sawyer, fucking great song. Yeah. Limelight, great fucking song. They had some really good red barchetta, why 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 Unbelievable. That era rush, I love. Everything else that they've done, I think, is fucking trash. All right. Just boring. I'll give you that. Boring to listen to. They pulled out the uh, during the hair metal era, the Roll the Bones. Remember that song? Yeah, God. With the little the, the little uh, computer generated rap in the middle of it. Yeah, no facts. action, reaction, chemical interaction, uh, f- right. fractions. And what about factions? What about triumph? I was just thinking of them. Not a fan. Rick Emmett, great. Not, don't dislike them. Not a fan. I think that they're probably rated right about where they should be. I, I not a not a, a huge fan. I, I, I would kind of put them in the same category as a band like Y and T. Not a fan. Don't dislike them. Just kind of there. Yeah. There was a see. The brain again. There was a song by Triumph that I loved, and I can't think of the fucking name of it. And it's like, what, what did we say earlier about something that's just forgettable? Yeah. yeah. Well, Oops. if you if you can't remember it, there's a reason why it wasn't that good. Boom. I yeah. Oof. 
What do we got? All right. I don't know. I think we're kind of beating this one to death here. I think we are, oh. we're, 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 we're well over our time here. We, oh. are, we are almost two hours in. So I think we, we pretty much fucking beat this one up pretty well today. All right. So next week, we're going to do cover tunes. Cover tunes. Cover tunes, yes, that should have been done. Cover tunes that never should have been done. Oh. So we're, we're going to throw that out there. I, I got a whole bunch that you know, we already talked about a couple of them today. You know, the Aerosmith run the MC walk this way. Boom. Uh, Anthrax and Public Enemy bring mm-hmm. the noise, and those were those were collaborations, but I still kind of consider them cover tunes. Tesla doing the Rolling Stones, yeah, or Red Hot Chili Peppers doing Higher Ground, yeah, Ooh, um, and songs that never should have been covered, never should have been covered. Uh, Faith No More doing War Pigs, we did God fucking awful. Uh, I wish we had talked about Faith No More. Faith No More, all right, throw it out. Faith No More, all one, right. One, one great album, everything else they've done. Another shit. band that I thought. This is going to be something exciting when when they come along because you know when I finally hear them. <laughs> yeah, but give, wait, give me Brendan Bean. <clears throat> Dom, are you listening? Journey. Dom Frizzy, third floor guitar, his favorite band. Journey. Um, That's why we had to go our separate ways. I think Journey is a band that before. They had the the song on the Sopranos season finale or, or show finale. Ruined it for me. I, I think that that put them over the top, which made them overrated prior <laughs> to that. I think they were pretty much rated where they should have been. Yeah. Too many ballads for me. Uh, I liked them better when they were playing more of the rocking kind of stuff. They, they just got way too much into the sappy ballads, and then even Steve Perry left and went and did his own stuff. And, it and they, was got a, they got a Polynesian Steve Perry. Yeah, they basically did. They got a uh, discount Steve Perry. Or Filipino. Ding, Am I supposed was. to say those words? I, we, I don't know. Yep. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, and by the way, if you close your eyes, he was Steve Perry. He, he sounded his exactly. His eyes were half closed. Yeah, they, uh, always. But he sounded just like him. Just like him. He Fucking, really did. Holy shit. Yep. But I think that's one of those bands where... Probably a little overplayed, e- even before. I think they were still a little overplayed, mm-hmm. but um, after they they just kind of went crazy after they had the song on the the uh, finale of the Sopranos, and everybody went crazy for it. And I was just like, yeah, they weren't that good before that yeah. happened. And yeah, it's a bar no. girl song that you put that on, and all the girl, you know, just a small time living in a lonely world. Oh my yeah, no, god, all, this is my the- favorite. Favorite song. All, all, all the old fat drunk broads get up there and fucking think they can dance. Uh, but but uh, uh, all right, any way you want it in Caddyshack, dude, love it. Great. Yeah. Great. And Rod, great Rodney song Dangerfield plays fucking yep. Rodney Dangerfield dancing hey, on the fucking You must golf have been bus. something before hey. electricity. <laughs> hey, honey, want to earn $14 the hard way? <laughs> hey, Wang, it's over here. Yep. Bob Kraus, big Triumph fan. And a Y&T fan. Summertime, girls. Right, Bob, Bob what, what was the, what's the big Triumph song? John can't remember. Bob Kraus, we need you. They had a video, and Rick Emmett was in there, and and, and they, they looked like they were flying away. Or, or if, if Rodney's still on, there was a Triumph song that Rodney keeps trying to get me to do a cover song of. It was a Triumph song, and I can't remember what it is. All right, music people, All I right. have a question that's been burning my asshole for the longest time. Does anybody remember a song called We Ride Tonight by Uriah Heep? Please, somebody tell me I didn't dream it a long time ago. I can't find it anywhere. There was a video where they were... On the fucking scoots in uh... Fight the Good Fight. Is that Tri- right? Triumph or Magic Power? Uh, uh, it might have been Magic Power. Fight, fight the Good Fight, Rodney. Definitely the one that you always tell me to do in Magic Power. I don't know if I know that song, Brendan, but Rodney's asked me uh, a thousand times to do a cover of Fight the Good Fight, Triumph. Really? And that, that's a song that you would probably recognize. It's one of those ones where you don't think you know, and then the minute you put it on, yep. you go, oh, yeah, I know this song. Like Al- Eye in the Sky by the Alan Parsons Project. Great fucking song. Yeah, I'd pro- I, But I, when it comes on, you go, I love this song. All right. Silence. So I think, we, I think we beat the subject to death. So yeah. next, next week, cover tunes. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Cover tunes next week. Cover tunes. Cover tunes Good, next week. Good, bad, who should, who shouldn't. So start thinking. Songs that never should have been covered. Songs that were great to cover. Who do you want and us e- and to even cover? A song, and even a song that you don't think anyone should ever cover. I think people should leave, like uh, with the exception of Jimi Hendrix, people should leave Bob Dylan alone for a while. Just stop covering Bob Dylan songs. I, I think listening to Bob Dylan sing a Bob Dylan song is more than enough. Love Bob Dylan. I, Very uh, right where he should be because the people that love Bob Dylan love Bob Dylan. And the people who hate Bob Dylan hate Bob Dylan. I haven't way, listened I'm, to him enough. I'm on both sides of the fence. I, yeah. some, some of his stuff I think is phenomenal and some of his stuff I'm just like, who was the fucking producer in the fucking studio that allowed that <laughs> shit to go on the album? 
Good stuff. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for tuning in last week to our uh, our, our funny TNA episode. Uh, fun TNA episode, I should say. Yes. Funny is uh, subjective. And uh, that was a fun one to do. Nice to talk about... Uh, boobs and balls and butts Oops, yep. and, and whatever the hell else we we did so i think next week hopefully we're going to start we're going to expand next week we're going to be on youtube we're going to be on twitch yes and facebook so anyone that doesn't like coming to facebook to watch us we're going to be on youtube we're going to be on twitch uh going to try and get us streamed out to a couple more and starting next week we're going to start having our, our dairy guest on the show yeah we're gonna, we're, and we're going to call that uh smell my smell the dairy air smell my dairy air yeah that'll be that'll be part of the uh, the show next week, we're going to have a uh, local dairy business is going to be here on the show talking about what they have to offer. Giving product, back to the community. Product services, trying to, you know, welcome dairy people in and, and promote local businesses. We're, uh, we're here for you, folks. So, peace out. Appreciate everybody joining us. and uh, Send us beer. I'm, I'm going to punch John in the face again for fucking bad mouth and Pantera. And I'm going to fart. Thank you. <laughs>